Alright, welcome and welcome back everybody. So we are here live, We're gonna do a playthrough of Nemo's War, just hang out, talk games. So thanks for joining. Hopefully everything's looking okay as far as video and sound goes. This is my first official like board game stream on YouTube, so feel free to let me know if there's uh, anything you see or hear that could be improved or that needs to be fixed. But Without further ado, this is the board game Nemo's War. I do want to give a big shout out to Tabletop Tycoon. Um, they sent me a free review copy of this game and I played it for the first time yesterday. It's one that I've had on my list of games that I've wanted to try for a long time. So I'm glad that I'm finally able to play it. So thank you to Tabletop Tycoon and Victory Point Games. Um, so I've gone ahead and done some of the little tedious setup so that we can just jump right into the game here. Um, if you're familiar with this game, that would be great. Please feel free to chime in and let me know if there's anything that I'm doing incorrectly. Um, again, this is my own second play ever, so I figure this will help to hash out some of the kinks before I do a full review on the game. So the first thing we're going to do is start by drawing a card from our adventure deck, which uh, for this first round is going to be our prologue. So this is Act 1. The facts relating to this apparition entered in various logbooks agreed in most respects as the shape of the object or creature in question. The untiring rapidity of its movements, its surprising power of locomotion, and the peculiar life with which it seemed endowed. If it was a whale, it surpassed in size all those hitherin classif hitherto classified in science. So for the prologue, we are going to roll a die and place the Nautilus in the corresponding major ocean. The Nautilus, of course, being Nemo's ship. So we are in four, which is the South Atlantic down here. And we're going to commence play with the next card. At the beginning of each placement phase, we will be rolling two dice. And to start with as well, let's let this prologue card off to the side here. We are going to be playing our Explore campaign here. So for Explore, we have the option of purchasing Hydro Drive for three ship resources, which are Nemo, the crew, and the hull. I think we'll do a combination of the crew and the hull. So if you're not familiar, each of there are four different scenarios that you can play through that have different scoring conditions for symbols that you'll be picking up. So in Explore, I won't bore you with the details, but essentially we don't get a lot of points for shipping war uh, or sinking warships, but we do get a lot of points for discovering science and for seeing wonders, which we'll get through different adventure cards and also through collecting different treasures that are out on the board. All right, so moving on, the first thing we're going to be doing here in our turn sequence is the event phase where we're going to review or reveal the top card of this draw deck. And this one is a play card, so it'll happen automatically. And it says, oh gosh, Egeri, Egri, Somnia. <laughs> the Nautilus floated in the midst of a phosphorescent bed, which became quite dazzling. It was produced by myriads of luminous and Immaculate, whose brilliancy was increased as they glided over the metallic hull of the vessel. Some fun words here. And let me know if you prefer to hear the captions of the cards or if you prefer to just focus on the gameplay. So we're gonna play the card right away. We can lose one Nemo or one character to pass, which means we would get these icons, or we are going to lose one action if we have any and Fail. We do start the game with one action. So let me grab these characters here and place them out where you guys can see them. So we do have these characters which are one time use. If we don't use them at the end of the game, we'll get to score them for our icons. So I know that this is where our ships are going to go eventually, our tonnage, but I will place the characters here. This is quite a large board, so we're making some compromises with the streaming setup here. In this top corner, all that you're missing out on are a couple of the chits and resources, as well as a pile for collected treasures. Um, but I will keep you guys briefed on what treasures we acquire as we go through. So I don't really want to lose a Nemo because it does score me seven points at the end of the game if I do have this extra wonder but I will get some science and some other things. Otherwise I lose my action. So that's kind of tough. I feel like I do need actions to start off with. So we're gonna go ahead and lose an action to fail this one and retain our Nemo. It's gonna go in the fail part, uh, part here. And Andy says, can't really focus on the gameplay if we don't know what the cards say. 
Perfect. All right. Uh, more so the flavor text of it. I'll definitely read out the cards, but each one has a little paragraph that kind of goes along with that as well. Okay. So moving on, that's our event phase. Now we're going to go into placement. We'll roll all the dice we have in the prologue or act one. We're just going to roll these two white dice and we're going to take a look. If the dice are the same number, it will become a lull action where not much will happen. Otherwise, we'll take the difference in the dice and that will uh, assign our actions for the round. We can only have a maximum of five though, unless we use some other special powers and things like that. In addition to that, we're going to place out warships or ships in these locations. So you'll notice these tokens on the board are actually hidden ships. So first, we're gonna put one in space one. And next we're gonna place one in space three. Eventually we'll place hidden ships in other areas. Um, and once those spots run out, then we will definitely um, be replacing them with other ships. And it sounds like our board game music is a little loud. So let me know if that's better. Yes, no, maybe so. All right, thanks. I appreciate the heads up. Okay. So moving on, we're going to do our standard turn now or our action phase. We have two actions this round. Um, the different actions that we can do are going to be we can search for treasure, we can do movement, we can attack ships, which currently we don't have any out. We can um, repair or refit for our crew and our hull. Um, we can also incite, which will get us cubes um, for liberation, which in this game, they're only going to be worth three points each. So that's not a huge concern at this particular time. And eventually, once we do destroy ships, we can purchase more upgrades. Awesome. Thanks for the heads up. All right. So I think what we want to do, oh, that was here, is we want to start by getting some treasure again for the explore action. Are we benefit by being able to move um, up to twice with each action or each movement? And, um, we're going to really benefit from some of the icons that we'll find from this adventure deck. So, yeah, I think we'll go ahead and do that first. And here there is a nice little chart you guys probably can't see because it's super tiny, but it does have the cost of each action. So provided that it's a normal turn, which this is, in order to search for treasure, it's going to cost us one action. So we'll detract that from our action point track. We'll remove this treasure icon. All right, and let's just make sure here that we're getting all the correct steps in order. All right. So I believe we are going to be taking from this adventure deck and searching. So there's one treasure on top, that's how many treasure we'll draw at the resolution of the card. Um, and this one is a keep card, which means it'll stay in front of us until we trigger the effect. So this one says, um, Van Coro, the captain came up to me, put his finger on one spot on the chart and said the single word, Van Coro. The effect was magical. I rose suddenly. The Nautilus has brought us to Van Coro, I asked. Yes, professor. So for this one, we're going to keep it. And when the Nautilus is in any Pacific Ocean, I may spend an action to collect treasure or fail to gain resources. Um, excellent. So we'll have to get over to the Pacific in order for that to trigger. And again, since it's a key card, it'll just stay in front of us. I'll put it off to the side for now. Alrighty. Let's see. So let me just make sure we do get this one here. All right, and we'll accumulate more treasure onto these cards um, during different phases of the game as well. So we'll discard that to take a random treasure. And it is a singular gem, which these are worth plus one per each token or icon that we get. I'm gonna put it up in our collected treasure again. Sorry that <laughs> you can't see it. It's one of the things that, there are many different things that we're gonna have to keep track of on this board. So we should be good there. Oh, actually. To search, we're going to have to roll the die that's right. So we have our two white dice. Um, we're going to perform an adventure card test in order to win. So we can also utilize different things from our uh, ship here in order to pass. We can use some of our people that we have at our disposal. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, kind of 
put in a crew here for plus three to my die roll. And if we roll less than a six or six or less, we're gonna be in danger. But if we get a seven or above, we will get a, a treasure, potentially two, depending on what, how we roll. So we have plus three to our die rolls. And we have, oh no, double snake eyes, which is an automatic fail. So that's a little unfortunate. Um, on a fail, we're gonna lose one crew and one hull. Ooh, that is not good. So we lose the one that we bargained, and then we're gonna lose an additional one of each. That's not a great start, which means we also don't get to collect our treasure. All right, now that we have the correct order, I knew I was forgetting something. We'll go ahead and move on. We do have one action left. We can save one action from round to round if we so choose. That might be a good idea for us to do or we could start moving towards the Pacific. In fact, because we have this Hydro Drive card, we can move up to two. Um, so let's see, we'll go ahead and do that. So one, two, and we will pass this card, meaning it'll go into our pass pile. We'll score points for those cards at the end of the game as well and collect two treasure. So let's go ahead and try that again. So we have our singular one gem treasure and our other treasure is going to be Ooh, a retain. So this one will allow us to discard this to gain one Nemo. Or at the end of the game, if we still have it, it'll be worth four treasure with our modifier plus one for the Explore card. All right. And that is all of our actions for this round. So we're going to go ahead and reveal the next card for our event phase. Oh yeah, so I um, read it yesterday and watched a video of someone playing it on YouTube. And I was watching the video and reading the rule book. I was definitely like, oh my gosh, there's so much to keep track of. But I think once you play a round or two, it becomes a little more straightforward. So hopefully this playthrough will help you out. If you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them, though I'm definitely not the expert being that I've only played it once before. Um, but thanks for joining. All right, so we have the Coral Realm. Captain Nemo and his men had come to bury their companion in this communal resting place on the inaccessible ocean floor. Oh, that's really dark. <laughs> okay, so this is a test. The number here indicates the dice roll that we would have to get, again, using this chart. So let's see, or not using this chart, but it just indicates the die roll. And it does have the C icon, which means we can offer up um, a Nemo resource potentially. If we do succeed, we get the resource back, but as you saw on the failure <laughs> that we just rolled for a search action, if we don't, then we'll lose that resource. We have to get a 10. I think I'm gonna go ahead and offer it up. Hopefully we don't roll double snake eyes. Um, kind of like D&D there, that if you get double ones, it's an automatic fail regardless of modifiers. So hopefully that won't happen again during this playthrough, or at least too often, fingers crossed. All right, do they come back as zombies? Not that I know of. <laughs> oh, okay, so we got nine plus our modifier of two, which means we pass, we retain our Nemo resources. And for this pass effect, we are going to gain two crew. So we'll put that in pass step and our crew will bump back up to being nice and fresh. Love it. All right. Oh, thanks, Andy. I appreciate it. <laughs> Again, I have the rule book here as well, so if something doesn't seem right, I am more than willing to look it up. That's kind of what this playthrough is for. You know, just some, some Nemo and chill. Hang out, talk games, play games, figure it all out. All right. We're gonna go into our placement phase, so rolling our dice. Oh, a one and a two. That is almost a little turn. So we'll get one action. Again, the difference between the two. And we're going to place our tokens out, starting with the lowest die, which is a one. Again, there's an empty space, so we're going to place one of these hidden ship tokens instead. And two in the Eastern Pacific, another one. Okay. Always wanted to get this game, but it looks complicated. Is there a system that's similar to this or is it in its own lane? Um, I think I, the game that it reminds me the most of, and I don't have a lot of experience playing this one either, is Robinson Crusoe. It's similar where you're going out and getting resources, where you're rolling dice to check for successes on different types of tests. So out of the games that I've played, I would say that's the one that feels the most similar. Although how it, everything resolves, it's nice because there are references all over. 
Um, I probably going forward will print out a player aid where it's just a little bit more concise versus looking here, 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 here. Um, but once you kind of know, again, a large part of it is down here, just checking your die rolls and resolving them. So the chart is very clear um, for that. Okay, so we have that, we placed out our hidden ships. And the next thing that we're going to be doing is taking, we only have one action. I suppose we can search again and try to get this treasure here. Um, yeah, let's do that. Oh, which actually, hold on one second. Because we didn't pass this one, I believe that will stay there. That was my fault for doing it out of order. Okay, so why don't we do our search action? Let me just make sure here. Insight, move, rest, pair, refit, search. Ah, uh, yes, okay. So technically, are there ways to lose fast or do you just end up with a low score? So yeah, there are definitely ways to lose fast. The nice thing about this one is there's a lot of spaces for hidden ships. One of the lose conditions is that you are overwhelmed with ships. Um, so those typically don't come out and some of the harder ships will come out during act two and act three if we get there, fingers crossed. Um, the other way is if your notoriety gets to the defeat spot. So there's not a way, I, I would imagine it would be very difficult to lose during the first act, but if you're not being preemptive, then there are a lot of ways I think that it could stack up very quickly in act two. Um, we're gonna XCOM this really quickly. So technically, because I didn't get this treasure, I wouldn't have this card since we failed. So this will go back on the adventure deck. I'm just gonna shuffle that there. But we are gonna perform a search action in the Eastern Pacific in the uh, correct way now. <laughs> Thanks Mackenzie, Thanks for stopping by. All right. Yeah, and again, with Robinson Crusoe, I felt like I took a nosedive within the first couple of rounds of the game and there was just no way out. With this one, it gives you some kind of space to breathe and some time, at least it did when I played it yesterday. So I'm fingers crossed that uh, I'll have a better idea of how to prepare for uh, act two and three in this playthrough. So we're gonna do the search action here. The first thing we're gonna do is do our roll. I'm gonna add a crew of plus three and hopefully we're not gonna roll snake eyes again. We could use one of our people here for a re-roll or for plus two dice roll. I don't remember what the M stands for, but those basically anytime you're using this chart, dice roll modifier, that's what it must be. All right, we're gonna roll and see how we do. Oh my gosh. Oh, are you guys seeing this? <laughs> Is this real life? So I got a three, which would be danger. I would not get the treasure and I would lose a crew or a hull. Um, what I can do instead though is use um, Konsu, one of my mates here, to give me one reroll. He would instead get me four character points at the end of the game. However, I think that getting this treasure is a little more important. So we're just gonna flip him over and place him here. Sorry, my friend. And for the reroll, let me just double check and see. Is that one die or two? I would imagine it would be two, but we can definitely check that. So it looks like there's a lot of people here who have maybe purchased this one or wanted to try it, but haven't yet. Um, is there anybody that's currently watching that has played the game yet? And what are your thoughts? I would love to hear some more opinions. If there are any seasoned veterans out there <laughs> to see. All right, so I believe it is both. Reroll again. If I roll two ones on a reroll, it's just we might as well just pack it up. Oh, that's much better. Okay, so we have a roll now of eight plus three, which is 11, which will allow us to collect a treasure. Okay, ooh, if we got a 12 plus, we would collect two treasures, but I think I want to save my uh dice roll modifiers for later on. So we'll take this treasure and that will go over here. The adventure deck is for the explore action. That's what I was getting it mixed up with. Okay, so we do have a treasure value of three that we're gonna place in our collected treasures. All coming back to me now. All right, and that was our one action for the turn. So going into the next event phase, we're gonna draw the top from our draw pile. We have the lost continent, but Captain Nemo came over and stopped me with a gesture. Then picking up a piece of chalky stone, he advanced to a black 
basaltic rock and scrawled in one word, Atlantis. So this is a test. We can use a Nemo or a crew um, and we can only use one of either. So if we pass, we collect two treasures or gain a Nemo. If we fail, we lose one Nemo and place one key card from the tableau into the fail pile. We don't have any key cards, so that will be okay. Um, instead, let's see. All right, I suppose we will roll and try with a crew. So we have a modifier of plus three. Let's see. Okay, so we have six plus three is nine. So we would fail unless we are able to make up the difference of two, which one of this one of these does give us two plus two after a roll. I think that will be really important. Now, when we flip this one over, we are going to gain a notoriety, which is one of those tracks we have to um, uh, keep track of here. I have, I think it's cool. I like the story, but can definitely feel punishing with consecutive bad rolls. No feel forward mechanics. Yeah, the references are good. And again, the actions, though there are quite a few of them, they all make sense once you've played through them a little bit, I think. So that's good to know. Okay, so we have 11. We retain our crew here. We're going to pass this card and collect two treasure. Really exciting. All right, and we have, ooh, a four treasure. And ooh, a Great Barrier Reef. So this is one of those wonders that for the explore scenario, which we're doing, will score us seven points at the end of the game if we keep with that. Okay, so moving along here, we're gonna go ahead to our placement phase. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is gonna be a lull turn. So we'll place ship tokens where that is located. Now, since our one column is filled up, we're first gonna check to see if we can place hidden ship tokens in any of the connected areas, which we can. So I'll place one here in the Arctic Ocean and one here in the Central Pacific. If we're not able to do that, that's when those um, ships are gonna start coming out and being placed. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. If there's a treasure available in that little ocean, we'll place it there. However, there's not one. Uprising cubes are ways that we can get points. They're not gonna be as important during the explore campaign. Um, I think during some of the other scenarios, they'll score more points. So those are gonna be cubes that we can place out as one of our actions. We don't have to worry about that. And now we have our action phase. So we can do some of the minor actions such as rest, repair, and su uh, such for a lowered cost of one action point each. However, we have zero actions. So that's gonna be it for our little turn. Okay, so moving on, our next event phase. We have Commerce Scare, the Ship and Mercantile Gazette in Lloyd's List, the pocket, Packet Boat, and the Maritime and Colonial Review. All papers devoted to insurance companies which threatened to raise their rates of premium were unanimous on this point. Public opinion had been pronounced. Perform uh, this many reactions. So this is a play card, it'll happen right away. We have um, for and pass if motive is war, anti-imperialism, or if the motive is explore silence, we're gonna get two action, or this many reactions and explore. So, or, and fail. So this one is going to be a fail for us. For each reaction, we gain a notoriety or we flip any non-worship token to show its worship side. We have no ships out, so we're going to have to fail this and gain two notoriety, one for each of the two reactions we have. All right, let's roll our dice. Now later on during act two and three, we will be getting more dice to roll as well, which can help with some of those things. So lull turns are gonna be a little bit more prevalent during this first phase of the game. We have a three and a two, so we have one action. Oh no. Mackenzie, I think you jinxed it with the talking about the bad die rolls. <laughs> oh man. All right, let's put out our ships here. So we do have an available spot in our Eastern Pacific for two and for three in our North Atlantic. Well guys, we have a whopping one action. What should we do? Um, I suppose something we could do is try to repair our hull since it's looking a little, um, actually that costs two actions since it's not a um, low turn, so. I don't know. Hey, thanks Christopher, appreciate it. 
And yeah, the waters are very treacherous. Oh no. Okay, maybe we'll just save our one action and try to do something cool next time. It does take, uh, while well, it takes one to search for a treasure where you just get it, you can spend two to go through this adventure deck, which is what I got confused at the very beginning. So apologies for that, just want to clarify. All right, yeah, more dice. We'll get some cool black dice, more white dice. It'll be a good time. So we're just gonna, just gonna pass there and go to our next turn. A frigate's demise. Two enormous water spouts crashed onto the deck of the frigate, racing like a torrent from stern to stern, toppling crewmen, breaking spare masts, and yard arms from their lashings. Play. Add the black background frigate to the Nautilus current ocean and fight it immediately. This is a mandatory free stock attack action. Okay, so for our um, ship here, we have Glasgow, which is going to go here. And we're going to have to attack it. So this will be a fun way. And this is a fail. So this will be a fun way to go through combat. Hopefully we can make it through. Thanks, Wayne. I appreciate it. We're going to need some good luck. Like hopefully things turn around here. So the first thing that will happen is um, when attacking, you can decide whether you want to make a stock attack, which is a singular concise attack with a plus one DRM or dice roll modifier or a bold attack. So if you have multiple ships, you can actually attack. Um, and if you're successful, move on to the next ship and the next ship and the next ship, although that will bump up your notoriety pretty significantly. So this is one free stock attack. So we'll place this on here. And first, the ship is going to attack us back. Essentially, the way that the rules explain it is that the Nautilus doesn't have guns. It's ramming into the ship. So the ship's going to fire at you before you have a chance to um, ram into it. And there's a nice combat sequence chart here, which we'll follow just to make sure we're doing the correct steps. So first is the, war, uh, the warship attack. So we're going to roll two d6s. And we have a seven. So we're going to compare that to the red number in the top left corner, which here is a six. And luckily, the seven is a greater number than six. So we are not hit. If it's lower, then we would take the lowest die value and we would add or um, subtract and we would have to roll that many times to subtract resources um, from our Nautilus. So luckily it missed us. Now what we're going to do is roll 2d6 and we're going to try to meet or exceed the defense value, um, which is a nine. Ooh. Based on our rolls, that's going to be impossible, but hopefully our luck will turn around. I will offer up a crew. Um, we get plus one for our stock attack. We exerted this ship resource to get plus three. If we have an upgrade strength and prowl, we would get an additional one. If there are other warships, we'll get a negative one. So right now we're at a positive four out of nine. So we just need to roll a five or higher. Oh dear. Let's see. Fingers crossed, everybody. Here we go. <laughs> hey, we got a 10. Oh, baby. I wish there was overkill on this. So this ship is destroyed. Um, if there are any bottom icons, any notoriety or benefits, then we would gain those right away. Additionally, we can see that there is an icon. I mean, it's probably hard to see, but there's a little icon here showing that it is a warship of zero. Our warships sunk here are negative one point each. So we have an option now of placing this in our Eastern Pacific. These are kind of like our trophies of ships that we've sunk, or we can place it over here into salvage, which will then be able to trade in for upgrades later on. Since this is negative one point, I think I'm going to put it into salvage. I think we really need some upgrades in order to uh, turn our luck around here. So we'll place that there. And that resolves our event for the round. Okay, next is our rolling of the dice. Roll a one and a six, come on. It's a dexterity game. If I roll them in the right way, I'll get the best reactions. Oh, a two and a six, that actually is just as good. So we'll get the difference, which is four points plus our one that we carried over. Total of five actions, we're maxing it out here. Oh boy. And we're gonna place out our tokens. We do have an available spot in our Eastern Pacific for the two and one for the six. And just an FYI, it does always resolve um, for ship placement from the lowest to the highest die. Okay, so we have five actions. We can do a whole bunch of stuff. Ooh baby. Unfortunately, 
there's no way to manage the hidden ships, which that's something that gives me a little bit of anxiety, seeing all these tokens, knowing they're gonna turn in ships soon, but we'll just go with it for now. We could adventure um, or do a, um, yeah, an adventure and get a treasure here. What else could we do? Mm. Oh, and we should have another treasure on the adventure deck from that little turn from before. That's what we forgot. So I think that might be a fun thing to do since we have the actions. We'll spend two actions to draw from the adventure deck. So these two treasure will go here and we get a card here, accident or incident. At three o'clock in the morning, I was awakened by a violent collision. I sat up in bed, listening in the darkness, and then was suddenly hurled up to the middle of my stator room. Apparently, the Nautilus had gone aground and then healed over sharply. So if we pass and keep this card, then we'll be able, oh, well, we have to pass the test first, but potentially we'll be able to get emergency help in the form of plus two to a die roll. Um, or if we fail, we're gonna lose a hull. Oh no, we don't have any keep cards in our tableau, so that wouldn't be the worst, but we can offer up a hull resource to try to get to nine. I think we'll try that. So we have plus one out of nine, two, five. So we're at seven, eight. Oh no, I would like to keep this card for plus two. I suppose, oh, we can use this one, plus one die roll move, or uh, die roll modifier. We do gain a notoriety, but we will get to keep this card and later on we can fail on this card and discard it in order to get a plus two. So we traded a plus one for a plus two and a couple points, but I'll be fine. All right, I also forgot to mention that um, in addition to that, we can use collected treasure as bonuses. Um, so they count as one per each that we have there. So that could be something we could do later on. All right. So, oh, this was the one that was supposed to be shuffled back in. Forgot about that. Additionally, we did have those two treasure on the top of the adventure deck. So since we went out and adventure, those will get discarded and we'll draw two treasures to replace. We have, oh, we can discard this for one action or keep it for two uh, gems. We can discard this to get a Nemo or keep it for four gems. We'll place those in our collected treasures here. All right, and let's see. The next thing that we're going to do is roll for our place. Oh wait, that was two for our, <laughs> oh my gosh. That was two for our, um, adventure action. We could adventure again, but there's no treasure to be gained. So I suppose instead we might want to move and then search for treasure. Oh, and this was successful. So we'll go one, two. And searching for treasure. If we get 12 or more, we get two treasures, which would be awesome. Uh, we can do plus three here. Do we want to sacrifice a treasure? I think we do. Um, so we'll sacrifice this three, which will give us a plus three. So we're at plus six out of 12. We automatically will uh, be successful. So it just depends how successful we'll be. We have eight plus six, that's more than 12. So we're gonna collect two treasures. Hallelujah. All right, we have a single treasure, our single gem and ooh, we have the Bermuda Triangle. So another wonder. Excellent. All right, so that was a movement and then a search. We have one action left over. Do we want to use it? I think we'll wait there. So moving on to our next adventure here, the Transatlantic Cable. We were about 500 miles from heart's content at a depth of more than 1,400 fathoms that I saw the electric cable lying on the bottom. So we're gonna keep this card if we're in the North Atlantic. We can, oh, we're not in the North Atlantic right now. It's over here. We can fail to do a free insight or search action, but no more than three of those combined. For each one, we gain a notoriety, or we pass at the end if it's unused. Okay, so we'll put this here, along with our accident or incident card. Okie dokie. 
And let's roll our dice for our placement phase here. Ooh, we have a two and a five. So let's place out our tokens. This two is filled, so we'll place one in Cape Horn, and our five is in the European Seas. And that means that we have three additional actions for this round. Let's see, what would we like to do? If we go here, we could do a search action, and then we could incite. Um, inciting will get us three points each, but I don't know that I want to spend actions on that at this particular time. We might just want to keep this card for two points at the end of the game instead, but the free search action is pretty good. So I think we'll go ahead and shoot for that. We'll use one point to move. Again, we can move up to two because we have Hydro Drive, which is our upgrade that we started with for Explore at the cost of three resources. And then we will fail this card to perform those actions. I think I want to um, offer up a crew for plus three. We'll get rid of this single treasure, I suppose, for plus one. So we're at plus four. We have eight, so 12, we get two treasures, awesome. Okay, and we have retain, we can discard this for a reroll, nice. And, ooh, City of Combat, which is another wonder that we've seen. Hello, Mom Gamer, welcome. <laughs> Playing Nemo's War, have you played this one before? Let us know. Okay, so that was one free action that we can do to pass. We can also try to incite, which will get us those cubes to place out. Um, and if we're very successful, we'll be able to uh, get rid of some of our, some of our notoriety that we had gotten before. So I don't see a reason why not to, other than we could potentially fail, but they're free actions, which I think we should definitely take advantage of if we can. So I'm gonna offer up a crew here for plus three. Let's see how we do. Ooh, 10, ooh. So we had a full on revolt here in the North Atlantic, which means we get to place one of our cubes. And we're also going to go down to notoriety, which is great. We get to do that again as a free action. So again, we'll offer up three. Hopefully we get another good die roll. Ooh, a four plus three is seven, which is apathy, no effect. All right, so that's fine. It still counts as a pass though, so we don't lose our crew. Um, perfect. Oh, and you played it awesome. Please feel free to let me know if there are any mistakes that I'm making or things that should be done differently. This is my personal second play of the game. Just played it for the first time yesterday, so we're just kind of fleshing out all the all the details here. <laughs> all right, so that was for that card. And let's see, we used one movement. We have three actions left potentially. We could move again and search for treasure. I think that might be to our advantage at this particular time. So we'll use one to move. We'll go to the European Seas. We'll use one to search. I'm gonna offer up a crew for a modifier of plus three. And I suppose instead of preemptively offering up treasure, I do have one that I can discard for a reroll. So maybe we'll just hold on to that and see what happens. Five, six, seven, eight, which if we look here is suspected. We do get to collect one treasure, but we go up one notoriety and I think that'll be okay. All right. Appreciate it, thanks. <laughs> oh, it's only a measly one gem. It is worth plus one if we stick with the explore scenario though, so that's good. And I think I wanna save that action point going into the next round, so, or into the next turn. Oh, we're in act two, so this is the first intermission. I was admiring the magnificent aspect of the ocean when Captain Nemo appeared. He did not seem to be aware of my presence and began a series of astronomical observations. Then, when he had finished, he went and leant on the cage of the watchlight and gazed abstractedly over the ocean. On the ocean, even. <laughs> so we're gonna add our dark yellow reinforcement ships to the ship draw pool. So these ships are a little bit more challenging. They come in as warships and they upgrade to uh, 
uh, harder ships to destroy. We're gonna add that in. The ships that do start in here are these pale yellow warships, which are a little easier to defeat, and these, um, what are they called? They're not warships, they're just like cruise ships. They're not cruise ships, but they're um, just for like normal people, <laughs> which they don't attack you, you just can attack them, non-warships. So we'll go ahead and shuffle these up. We will be having some warships coming out very shortly as we're running out of spaces for hidden ships for sure. Alrighty. And so we'll commence play with the next card and we'll roll two white dice and one black die to begin each placement phase. So this will give us another die. Um, unfortunately, we can only select the white dice though for our actions, which means that ships will just be spawning at a faster rate. Once we get into act three, we will add a third white die, which will give us more options. So let's go ahead and roll. Okay, so we have a two and a four and then another two. So let's start by placing our ships out. Um, the Eastern Pacific is full, and the only spot that we can place one is going to be in Central Pacific. So we'll place one hidden token for this two. For this two, we're gonna have to draw a ship and have it come out. Hi, from Brazil. Wow, that's awesome. How's the weather there? <laughs> Let's see. Okay. And we have Royal Sovereign. So let's place that in our Eastern Pacific spot. We can also additionally um, place it in uh, this ocean or an adjacent one, but we'll just put it there for now. Okay. And then in our four spot, we do have some spots for hidden ships. So we'll place that there and we get our two additional actions for this round. So we could down, go down there and try to punch a ship in the face. Um, once we get more salvage, we'll be able to upgrade. That would be very nice. Mm. However, we could also just search for more treasure, which I think based on this Explorer card might be our best bet. So I'm gonna travel to the South Atlantic using a movement point. Let's go ahead and search here. Oh, I forgot to put this back, but we'll uh, do a plus three to our roll. And fingers crossed. Four plus three is a seven, which is suspected. So we do get the treasure, but we also gain a notoriety. Um, as this track moves up, you'll also notice some other warships that are placed up here. So those will get put in the bag if we ever um, get to those spots as well. Oh, we got a four treasure, nice. All right, and let's see. That was our other action. I think I wanna save one again going into the next round, potentially. So let's draw our card here. Captain Nemo's Thunderbolts. When the first Islander laid hands on the contempor com companionway railing, he was flung backward by some invisible power. Lord knows what. He ran off howling in terror and wildly prancing around. Okay. So this is a test. We only need to get eight. We can offer up a Nemo or a whole resource. I'm really scared of losing Nemo um, because those get us a lot of points. It gives us a better modifier, but we'll try the whole and we need to roll an eight or higher. If we pass, we get some treasure, but also some notoriety. Let's see how we do. Hey, eight, so we are good there. So we'll pass, we gain one notoriety. This goes back, we retain it, and we get one treasure. All right, it is a two, excellent. Roll our dice for our placement phase. Okay, we have a four, a five, and a five. So we only get one action point, my word. So we have a four here. We have a five, which is connected to this one. So we can place, whoops, that's a treasure. We can place um, a hidden ship icon. And since there are no available pieces for hidden ships connected to our European seas for our five, we are then going to place out a ship instead. We'll just put it right on the European seas, I suppose. Okay. 
for those of you who are joining us today, um, in case you missed the beginning or in case you're unfamiliar, we're playing Nemo's War. Let me know if you uh, play a lot of solo games, if you have any recommendations, always looking for more games to try out, if you have any favorites, um, or if there are any that you're curious about, feel free to throw them in the chat. Maybe, you know, gamers helping gamers can <laughs> share some knowledge and some, uh, sorry, my brain just froze for a second. Share some knowledge and share some recommendations. All right. So let's see, we only have two action points. My goodness, should we search for more treasure? Should we go on an adventure? If we go on an adventure, we don't get any um, treasure. Those will replenish when we have more lull turns. So I think we're just gonna move. We could try to punch a ship in the face. We could go up to the European seas and try to take care of this ship. I think we'll do that. So we'll go one, go zoom, and one to attack since it is a it's gonna bug me if i don't look up what this is type of ship is called <laughs> um a non-warship but there was something in the rules i remember from yesterday of what type of ship it is let me see if i can find it really quickly it just says non-warships really i thought there was a different um I thought there was a different word for it. Maybe I'm crazy. All right, so it can attack me, but I'm going to attack it. And if uh, we're successful, I will gain a crew, which is, that would be pretty nice. So we need to roll a seven or higher. I'm gonna use a three for exerting a crew resource. So we only need to roll a four or higher on our dice. I think we should be fine. Oh, and it's gonna be a stock attack. So we actually get plus one. So four, a nailed it. All right. So this we can place down here or we can place into salvage. I'm gonna place it into salvage. So again, we can hopefully get some upgrades sooner. And let's see, that's it for our actions. Go on to our next adventure card. 42 degrees centigrade. The panels had opened and I could see a completely white sea around the Nautilus. Steaming sulfurous fumes uncoiled in the midst of waves, bubbling like water on the boiler. I leaned my hand against one of the windows, but the heat was so great I had to snatch it back. So this is a test. Um, we can offer a Nemo or a hull resource. If we pass, we gain a hull. If we fail, we lose one Nemo or one hull. It is also worth four points based on our explore card here. So I don't know if it's worth it to risk a resource. I don't know if I can roll a seven and I don't know if I want to give up treasure for that. So let's just roll and see how we do. If we fail, we fail. If we pass, great. Hey, 10, we did it. All right, so we gain a hole and we pass this card. So that'll be points for the end of the game. Oh dear. So let's gain that. And let's roll our dice. Okay, so we have a three, a five, and a six. That means we'll get two action points. We're gonna place out our tokens. For the three, we can place one in this empty adjacent ocean or sea. For the five, that's here. We don't have any adjacent, so we will have to place out a ship. We might as well put it in the European Sea, right? That way we can fight it right away without having to move, potentially. Hey, it's another non-warship. Okay, and for six, we have this one adjacent here. One of the things that I didn't notice uh, when I played through this for the first time yesterday right away is that the Indian Ocean and the Western Pacific are connected. You know, <laughs> sorry, flat earthers. <laughs> I know, right? Crazy. Um, <laughs> so there is that if you are playing through, just keep an eye out for. All right, I guess we will start by spending an action to make a stock attack here. So we have plus one, plus three. So we're at four. We need to get nine or higher. Oh no, that's an automatic fail. Rip. So we lose our resource. Oh, that is very sad. 
And in addition, we're going to gain a notori uh, not notoriety. And we also have to, um, wait, lose one or two risk ship resources. Let me make sure that we're doing this right. Oh, I suppose we can re-roll, right? Hold up. Anybody in the chat? If you roll double ones, can you use retained resources for rerolls? Let's see. That would definitely be one of those things. I know it talks about the ones being like an automatic fail, but I don't know if you can modify them after the fact. You can also search on Board Game Geek. I find that sometimes that's a little easier than a, uh, use rerolls on double ones. It's a little bit quicker sometimes uh, than looking through the rule book. Sometimes they're in multiple different places since they refer to like the double ones in a couple spots. Ooh, greetings from Germany. Thanks for joining, Peter. <laughs> It's quite late there, right? Getting it on in the evening. Okay, so I think we're gonna go with, unless I hear differently, that we can't use that just for the sake of time. That's definitely something that I'll look up after the fact to double check. Um, or if someone wants to help us out in the chat, I think we're gonna go ahead and use this as a reroll. So we're at three, four for the stock attack. Seven puts us over nine, so that will help us kill the ship. We'll put it into salvage, I believe. Yeah, then we can start to get some upgrades, hopefully, once we have some more action points. All right, and we have one more potential action. Do we want to move? Do we want to do something else? Suppose we can move over towards this um, part of the board, potentially but I think we can just save it. Maybe we'll be able to save it and combo it with future actions in order to uh, do the refit so we can get more upgrades. Okay. Oh, and for that ship, we do get a notoriety, so we'll move that up one. Okay, public option. This is a play card. Traders, ship owners, captains of vessels, skippers, and master mariners from Europe and America, naval officers from every country, and at their heels, the various national governments on these two continents were all extremely disturbed by the business. I don't know what business that refers to. <laughs> all right. And let's see, we fail this card and place one ship token on each major ocean using usual placement procedure. Uh, for each revealed ship token so placed, also gain plus one. Oh no. We might not make it to act three. Ooh, okay. Let's see what happens. Um. So starting with Ocean one, there is nothing there, so we'll uh, go ahead and do this. Ooh, did the chat disconnect? Anybody in the chat, let me know if it's working again. It looks like it reconnected, but hard to say. All right, and then in two, I don't wanna have two ships stacked up if possible. So I'm gonna place one in the Central Pacific instead since we can place them in adjacent ones. Three, we can place a hidden ship token in the European Sea, which is adjacent. For four, no luck. For five, we now have no luck. Uh, so we'll place this here. And then for six, also no luck. Oh no. All right, good, thanks Andy. Whew. Well, it's been nice knowing you guys. <laughs> Yesterday, during my first playthrough, if you look on the chart in the back, um, it's interesting because I think defeat is you just outright lose, but then the level of victory above that is failure, which to me, I would think failure sounds worse than defeat. So I'm like, oh wow, I didn't lose, but I'm still a failure, great. <laughs> but today, I don't know, it's looking like it might just be an outright defeat. We'll see what happens. Okay, so, oh, and for each ship, one, we place all but one, so we get five notoriety. 
Oh my word. I'm gonna blame it on the stream. Multitasking. <laughs> okay, oh man, these die rolls are killing me today too. That's a little challenging. Um, so let's place out more ships. Fun times. Okay, let's see. So we have a one. Let's put it in the Arctic Ocean. Pacific Coast. And then we have a five. Let's put this one in the North Atlantic instead. Spread them out. I don't know if that's a good strategy. Veterans, if you have some, some words of wisdom to impart upon us, impart upon us, now would be the time. All right. We have two actions. Oh no. Do we want to try to sink some ships? It's probably in our best interest. We could also spend our two actions to get an upgrade. So we could get steam torpedoes, which help us make, um, a a free attack per turn oh thanks for joining we'll see you later <laughs> um we could get monstrous design which help us gain less notoriety we could get double hull which helps us with the hull resource and um mitigating damage we could get more uh plus one DRM for doing search or insight actions. I don't think we'll be doing many more of those actions, but having the steam torpedoes would be really nice, especially against these, um, I guess I kind of think of them as passenger ships or non warships. That's the term I was thinking of before. So, but the steam torpedo costs four and we only have three. If we roll a 12 plus, then we would be able to um, gain an upgrade for one less. Mm, I don't know if it's worth it. Maybe we'll just try to get that fourth salvage because that'll help us anyway. So we'll move. Let's move to the Cape of Good Hope. And then we are going to spend an action to attack. Since it's a non-warship, it doesn't attack us. We just get to punch it. Oh, plus three. So we're at three out of seven. Okay, it is dead. We gain a notoriety. We're very close to adding in the blue ships, which is not ideal since we're gonna be drawing a lot of ships. So now this one would be worth one point. And if we fill up, so essentially when we kill ships, if we wanna take them as tonnage, we can place them in the ocean that they're in or adjacent to the major ocean. If we fill up an entire column, we'll get those points at the end of the game. But I think we need the uh, salvage here. So the other thing we can do is we can discard these to get actions, which I definitely think we're in desperate need of. So I'm gonna discard our chief engineer and forego the five points to get two more actions. And then we'll spend those two actions to try to refit our ship. Okay, and again, we're gonna offer three of these resources. I really want to make sure that we don't fail here. So I'm gonna offer one of the four treasures. So we are at a total of seven. We've definitely passed. Um, and then it just depends on how much we want to pass, essentially. Like if we want an upgrade with benefits. Oh, goodbye four treasure with five points. Ah, hopefully it'll be worth it. All right, so we're at three. Four, seven. Uh, plus seven, that's a 14. Hey, so we get to upgrade for one fewer salvage. And I think we want to take the steam torpedo as we discussed previously. It'll give us like a um, free torpedo attack, which is a little bit modified. We just roll dice and we're trying to hit a different number based on the type of ship, which we'll hopefully see here in a moment. Oh, I forgot to put my stock attack for plus one on there. All right, we're at zero actions. We could discard some other things to get more actions, but I don't necessarily think that's necessary right now. 
So, a pearl worth 10 million. There between its leaf-like folds, I saw a loose pearl as big as a coconut. Its globular shape, perfect clarity, and wonderful orients made it a jewel of incalculable value. Carried away by curiosity, I stretched out my hand to take it, weigh it, fondle it. <laughs> so this is a keep card when we're in the Indian Ocean, which we're adjacent to that. Um, for an action, we can do a test to collect a lot of treasure. Ooh, I love it. And if we fail, we only get one notoriety. Let's go. Okay, rolling our dice. Also, the clam in the pearls just makes me think of like the crystal clams in Dark Souls. I don't know if anyone's familiar, but for some reason now, anytime I see clams, that's exactly what my mind goes to. All right. Oh my goodness, these rules. Ah! I guess that's what the extra actions are for, but my goodness. Yeah, hoping we can survive. We're gonna have to hope because there's not much we can do action-wise <laughs> to survive at this point, I feel. Okay, let's put out a ship. Um, We'll put it in the South Pacific here for our one. Cool. And then for the two here, we'll put it in Cape Horn. And for a six, we'll put, ooh, hidden token in Cape of Good Hope. Perfect. Man, what a roller coaster. It was like very bad at the beginning. We got a couple good rolls. And now we're just right back to it. All right. Um, let's see. We have one action, one whole action, you guys. Awesome. I think we want to. Ooh, this one is worth a wonder. Mary Celeste. So we could move to the Indian Ocean and try to collect three treasure, which would give us more options for utilizing those towards future roles. We could also go to Cape Horn. Oh, and we could use our steam torpedo on this America ship. It's literally just called America. So I think we'll do that. Blam, Indian Ocean. Let's go ahead and do this test. Uh, it's a captain. So we'll offer up plus two for a Nemo resource. I'm gonna offer up another two treasure. We really don't have that many points, but at this, like, we can't afford to lose the test. So we're at plus four for the test. We need to get 10, so we need to roll a six or higher. That should be, like, statistically, we have a pretty good chance, right? Oh my goodness. <laughs> ah! So we're at three, four, five, six, seven. I can discard this to get plus three DRM, but I lose a Nemo and I lose seven points. My goodness. So we pass, but then I lose a Nemo. We get this, we get to keep it and collect three treasure. It's worth for us um, in the Explorer game, four plus one. So it's at least worth four points plus whatever treasure we get. Oh dear. <laughs> one, five. Ooh, that's the first time I've ever seen a five treasure and the pyramids of Yonaguni. Excellent. I've literally never traveled to any of these places, but they sound pretty interesting. All right. Well, that was fun. We can also use steam torpedoes. So the torpedo attack, we're gonna roll 2d6. And in order to sink a non-warship, we have to get a five plus. Um, if we miss, then we only get to roll 1d6 for the rest of the game for that particular upgrade. Custom dice with one open slot <laughs> replaced to a higher value. I know, right? Um, so fun fact, there are different levels that you can play. You can play as a captain, which is like a hard variant, or a sailor. Maybe I should have played on sailor for the first stream. Uh, but essentially, it changes the locations of these ships, and you have some other different setup things. Um, yeah. Oh, boy. Well, let's use our steam torpedo attack and see how we do. We need to roll a five plus out of two dice. Like, that should be easy, right? I mean, based on the last roll, no. Hey, we did it. Okay. So this one is sunk. Um, this one is worth three points. Do we want to take it as salvage? Um, this monstrous design is pretty good because we are getting up there. Oh, no. We also have to take two notoriety. 
we're getting up there in notoriety. Um, so it would be nice to be able to manage that. However, I do like the points from this. So we'll keep this one for points. Warships for us will be good for salvage because they will actually get us negative points um, if they're not worth a lot. So we go up to notoriety. We'll add this reinforcement group of blue ships into our bag. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no. I guess we can do insight actions uh, to lower our notoriety, but we are currently out of actions right now. Okay. If somebody wants to kickstart those dice that have the open side for whatever number you want, uh, let me know. <laughs> Instant backer <laughs> right here. Moving on to our next adventure. Ooh, the Indian Ocean. Now we begin the second part of his voyage under the seas. The first ended in that moving scene at the Coral Cemetery, which left a profound impression on my mind. And so Captain Nemo would live out his life entirely in the heart of his immense sea. And even his grave lay ready in its impenetrable depths. So we keep this card. When we're in the Indian Ocean, we may pass to gain one Nemo and plus one notoriety. Hey, guess where we are? So that's cool. Oh, I forgot we have a plus two DRM if we want to spend this um, instead of the three points. So let's just go ahead and pass that right away. We gain one Nemo. Welcome back. And we get plus one notoriety. Ooh, Let's go ahead and do our roll for placement. Oh my gosh. Three, four, and a five. So we only get one action. Beautiful. I take back what I said about this game being less punishing than Robinson Crusoe. <laughs> As we've gotten only one action for how many turns now? So three and a four, I think, oh, I should have specified that first. That's for the three. The four we'll put in the Cape of Good Hope. Okay, and for the five, we'll place a hidden ship token in the Indian Ocean since it's adjacent. Oh dear. I think it's time for a snack break. Not sponsored. If a snack company wants to sponsor board game streams, hit me up. Is that a thing? Alright, um. Let's see. What do we want to do with our whopping single action, you guys? I guess we can move and use steam torpedoes to try to punch another ship in the face. That could be cool. In fact, yes, let's do that. We're gonna move back to the Cape of Good Hope. Like so. We use steam torpedoes to try to roll five or higher. On the torpedo attack, I believe, so far as I know, that you can't use any modifications. It's like a freebie. Four. Oof, that's a miss. Let me make sure on that, actually. So otherwise we go down to one die roll, which isn't fun. The one thing about the torpedo attack, though, is if it's a warship, it can attack you back first, which, like, I don't know. It's uh, not super exciting there. Let's see. I had seen it at the top. Steam torpedoes. Yeah, it doesn't say that you can add any modifiers to that. Yeah, even the upgrade card doesn't allow us to modify it, so that's just a fail. Sick. Moving along in our deck here. Runaway Reef. The year 1866 was marked by a bizarre development, an unexplained and inexplicable phenomenon that surely no one has forgotten. I wonder what happened in 1866. So anybody read the book? So test seven, we can um, exert an emo resource. Let's do that. So we need to roll a five or higher, <laughs> which I have been saying it shouldn't be hard to roll a five or higher, but apparently we can't. We do have a plus two though. So as long as we roll a three or higher, we'll be fine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So about that, I guess we get four notoriety. 
And we lose our Nemo. One, two, three, four. We're at 20. If we reach 36 for Explore, we are defeated. So that'll be fun. Really feeling it, guys. We get two actions this time. How generous. Oh my word. <laughs> Let's place out from the ship. Oh boy. For the two, I guess it'll just have to go there. And then we have a um, four. We'll just put it there. And then we have a six. Put it in the Indian Ocean. Snake Eyes should be my middle name. I should get it. Uh, <laughs> I should get it legally changed. <gasps> oh dear. Man, if we were playing the opposite, where like low values were good, somebody tell me what's a game that uses low die values is like the best thing possible. That's the game that I should play. <laughs> okay. Well, let's use our steam torpedo. It's busted, so we only get one die. We need to roll a five plus. Nope, didn't think so. Should we try to attack the ship? I don't know. I think we'll try to attack the ship. Let's do a stock attack. So we get plus one, plus three, so we're at four. Oh my gosh, again with the, it's a nine. So we have to get five again. Maybe I just need to start like not rolling for fives. Hi Caleb, thanks for joining. Oh, wow. Okay, sure. So on like this non-important ship, we roll well. We get a notoriety. And we can place this either in the South Atlantic or the Indian Ocean, or we can take it to salvage. At this point, I don't think we'll be able to kill enough ships to get another upgrade. So let's just place this in our South Atlantic. Trying to get some points there. I am not eating my game components, although, I mean, they kind of look like they could be game components. They're just fruit snacks. <laughs> but good call. Thanks for monitoring. I'm glad that there's an adult president. <laughs> she definitely needs supervision. <laughs> All right. From this game, I mean, they do have the gems that kind of look like candy. There's not much else that looks like candy. I suppose the ships could look like little packets of chocolates. In fact, one of my favorite chocolates is an Austrian brand. I forgot the name, but it's this kind of orange color and it's got hazelnuts and stuff. So the packaging, I mean, if it was really blurry and this was way bigger, uh, could definitely be an Austrian hazelnut chocolate. I mean, lost the game completely, probably in a few rounds, lost my mind completely. Probably before that. <laughs> All right. Why don't we just do a good old search action? Why not? Might as well get some treasure if we're gonna get our ass kicked. So, oh, we haven't gotten it yet though. Let's do plus three. And should we sacrifice some treasure? Mm. How well do we think we can roll? We need to get a seven or higher. So we just need a four. I'm gonna just go for it. A seven plus three, which is a 10, which is a success. We get a treasure without gaining notoriety. So that's good. Let's see. Ooh, this one gets us a reroll. Thank goodness. Not like our rerolls have been much better, but you know, we'll see what happens. And those are all of our actions. Let's go on. Captain Nemo's Diaries. For my part, I did not wish to bury with me my curious and novel studies. I had now the power to write the true book of the sea, and this book sooner or later, I wish to see daylight. Hmm, cute. After we place the finale card in the pass field pile, oh, if we pass or fail, we get extra points. Um, 
or we get a Nemo or lose a Nemo. So this is the diary he would write after, I suppose. Yeah, uh, this is my personal second play of this game, which as you can see, I'm already a master. We're just crushing it. <laughs> Here we go. But yeah, Caleb, do you have any favorite solo games that you've been playing recently or any new ones that you've been checking out? Oh my gosh, you guys, look, we get five actions. <sighs> Somebody, I mean, we have to establish this as a national holiday. Let it be known at 1.16 p.m. Central Standard Time that it's the holiday of rolling five actions in Nemo's War after a very, a very, uh, debilitating first act and second act all right let's place out our ships uh, let's see maybe enter <laughs> miguel says beautiful and entertaining very beautiful for sure entertaining maybe more so for those of you who are watching me lose at it um i'm feeling a little less entertained but <laughs> i'm sure i'll get over it so we have a one, another one. Oh, should we put another one in the Central Pacific? Sure, why not? This is just filling up. And a six, which we can place a hidden ship token here. Ooh, a lot of roots. Nice. Gaia Project, fantastic. I haven't played Gaia Project, but Root is definitely one of my favorite asymmetric games. Back before they released the like new official clockwork, I remember playing against the um, cap clockwork autonoma when they uh, first were trying it out. And it was <laughs> it was so broken that I haven't brought myself to uh, read the rules for the new boards, although I'm sure they're much more balanced. <laughs> um, but yeah, actually I have the rule book out on my dining room table right now for the clockwork expansion since that's like my next project. So yeah, I'm excited. And I'm excited to try the different bot boards as well. Yay, that's awesome. I just need to sticker my eerie board since I know there was like a misprint or something, which one of my friends was super mad about. I'm like, bro, it's just like one sticker. <laughs> like, get over it. It's going to be okay. Especially with all the content that they've put out for Root. Like, you can't be upset that there's like one minor little thing that got misprinted. Okay. Ooh, speaking of excitement, what are we going to do with five actions? This is great. <laughs> This round, maybe Miguel is pretty, pretty entertaining. Um, we'll go back to rolling double. We'll go back to rolling snake eyes next round though, and then I'll feel differently. <laughs> okay, so we could um, maybe we want to punch some ships. Ooh, this one gets us a treasure. I do like the idea of grabbing this one. So we don't have enough salvage to upgrade. So we're gonna go here. We'll do our hydro drive move. We'll do our free steam torpedo. <laughs> oh, really? I feel like a two, that didn't work. Hmm. Include the fixes to the misprints. Yeah, I think um it came with the sticker, right? But the uh they didn't catch it in time for the printing, so. I just haven't stickered it yet. I have it down in like my box of stuff. All right, and let's do an actual attack on this ship. All right, and let's see. Speaking of Kickstarters and leader games, um, Caleb or anybody else, have you guys played Oath? I know Mackenzie, if you're still here, that you have. Uh, that's one I'm really looking forward to trying. I was really close to backing it, and then I was like, oh, I don't know. It seemed like there wasn't a lot of upgrade material for it in the Kickstarter, but um, that's another one that I'm looking forward to hopefully trying. We're attacking this ship. So plus three, and we want to risk anything else. We just have to get to seven. I think we'll be okay. I do have a reroll. I do have a plus two. As long as we don't roll snake eyes, it should be fine. Ooh, same. Oh my gosh, we rolled a 10. Beautiful. Eastern Pacific or South Atlantic? We'll go Eastern Pacific with that one. 
it'll be worth uh, two points plus, oh wait, sorry. It'll be worth seven points for this one, which is awesome. Mary Celeste. Oh yeah, yeah. It's always hard too. There's so many Kickstarters. It's literally like, oh, I just want this one game. Oh, I don't want to pay like three, four figures for it. <laughs> but then you feel left out if you don't have all this stuff. Oh man, real talk here. It's like, these are the real issues, you know? And you don't see the price on the first page because the rewards are the other tab. So you see how cool the game is? And then you find out how much it costs after you've fallen in love with it. It's like extortion of the worst kind. <laughs> Let's see. Should we try to punch some other ships in the face? Maybe. This one gets us a treasure. We do get negative one. Uh, oh, there are more ships, so we'll be fine there. Should we search for a treasure first? I think we should. So let's do plus three. Let's roll our dice. Two, six. So eight plus three is 11. Oh, we're one away from getting a second treasure, but we would have to spend a good treasure to get a second treasure that might not be as good. And I want to save my plus two for actual important stuff where there's like a loss involved. So I'll just collect a treasure. Ooh, Mariana Trench. Nice. And then we'll spend another action to move here and we'll attack the, or actually, let's see. Is there somewhere else we wanna to move to free up some space? I think that's probably the better bet. So we'll move to the South Pacific here. So that's connected to Western and Eastern Pacific. And we'll try to fight Scotia, which is a freighter. Going through a collection purge. Oh yeah, that's rough. <laughs> yeah, good. Best of luck to you. You are, you are strong of will, stronger than I am. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's nice to be near a cafe. Um, unfortunately, where I'm located, it's like near a major city, but not enough to like casually go to game nights and things like that. So we're kind of out in the boonies a little bit. Um, as far as that goes. So it's like kind of have to build up the library here. It also doesn't help that my partner, um, Duke, <laughs> is also into board gaming. So like we already had sizable collections when we met and now it's just kind of gotten out of hand. <laughs> Too many games sounds like a good theme for a video. <laughs> what is this? What is this? What is this heresy of too many games? Okay, what does that mean? I don't even like... I'm sorry, like too many, too many sports games, too many video games. I'm not sure how that's relevant, Andy. <laughs> yeah, it's all right though. We, I, I mean, we make do. I think we, I think we have a better demo library than most of the game stores in the area, but shh, don't tell. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's, it's it's tough, it's tough. But hey, that's what solo games are for, right? If you don't have anyone to game with, even if you do have people to game with, like I still, <laughs> sometimes I'm like, oh, I miss playing solo games though. Not that I don't like my friends or like gaming with others, it's just one of those things. We're gonna try to punch this in the face, that's right. Take a stock attack. Oh, I keep forgetting to put the stock attack token for plus one. Plus three, so we're at four, we need to get to 10. I think I will spend a treasure Maybe just like one of these little baby ones. Yeah, I know, definitely. <laughs> the uh, getting through the pandemic and solo gaming, it was for us, it was that in a uh, board game arena, which I had used for quite a few years prior to that, but it was nice to see tables filling up at high rates and the number of games that they've been putting out too, it's like top notch. It's wrap. Five? We need to get 10. Oh no, I'm shooting for five again. Maybe I jinxed myself by using the one treasure. Oh, double fives. All right, let's go. We do gain two notoriety. 
which we're getting scarily close to losing there. This can go to the Eastern or Western Pacific. Let's do Western. It will be worth three points. Let's see. Uh, and that's all of our actions. Ooh, nice. I haven't gotten to play Arkham Horror, um, the LCG yet. Again, that's one that if I get into it, I'm gonna have to buy everything for it. And it's just like, ooh, I don't know. Um, but big fan of the other games in the series. Actually, I really liked Arkham Horror, but um, Elder Sign, although we clearly know that I'm not great at rolling dice, um, Elder Sign for me is a little bit quicker, so I really in, uh, enjoy that one. Hey, Rich! <laughs> yeah, I know, and I'm looking at some of the expansions, like what was it, the one, the the Bar Barkham Horror? Like just that expansion alone is out of print and it's like hundred plus dollars. So I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> We have a friend who has everything for it, but um, we were gonna play before the pandemic started and then the pandemic started and we haven't had a time to get together since. So maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> so this next card here we have is the Red Sea. The Greek and Latin historians do not speak favorably of the Red Sea. It is, he pretends, a sea subject to fearful hurricanes strewn with inhospitable islands and which offers nothing good either on its surface or in its depths. All right, so we can play this um, to keep it for seven points, or we can take up to two discarded ship tokens and place them in salvage. So we could get another upgrade, which would help us manage our notoriety, or we could have seven points. Oh, I think we want the upgrade. Oh, that feels bad. We could buy seven points. All right, recently discovered. Ooh, Mansions of Madness. Yeah, that's tough too, because it's like you have this game that's worth a lot of money. Do you want the money? Do you want to keep the game? It's one of those where I'm like, I don't play it enough to want to justify keeping the game when I could use that money, you know, towards other things, aka games, but it's tough. It's tough. Because then it's like, what if you want to play it in the future? And then it's gone. That's happened to me a couple times where I've skinny down and sold some games that I'm like, I'm never going to play this again. It'll be better like on someone else's shelf so that it actually gets played. And then, um, <laughs> and then like a couple months later, I'm like, man, I, I wish I could play that game. <laughs> Which if I hadn't sold it, I'd probably be fine not playing it. But then I like have to go back and rebuy it. It's happened quite a few times, unfortunately. Oh, see, I told you back to one action. All right, and let's place out our tokens. So for the two, we can put one in Cape Horn. For the three, uh, we're full up. So maybe let's place it right in the North Atlantic or in the South Atlantic. Hmm, South Atlantic, I think. Or actually North Atlantic, we could get some points. So hopefully it's not a warship. Hey, there we go. And four, uh, we'll put it in Cape Horn. Perfect. All right. Ooh, yeah. Is um, Cthulhu, is that the one that has like huge Cthulhu mini? It's like mini. I thought the Dark Souls miniatures were bad, but that one's just absolutely obnoxious. I'm like, there's no way that that's functional. Yeah, shipping can be problematic. I think over the pandemic, um, not I, I bought a lot of games used, but I also sold a lot of games used, like an obnoxious amount. So we just stocked up on like flat rate boxes and things like that, which was pretty okay. But it was definitely like, a, luckily during that time, I had some time off from work, so it worked out. But just getting shipping stuff and dropping everything off and scheduling pickups was like, it was like a job in and of itself. Oh, glad to hear the playthrough is looking good, Rich. Um, we're uh, we're probably gonna die here soon, but don't let that deter you. It's a pretty fun game. <laughs> All right, let's see. 
We have one single action, so we can't even get our upgrade. I could discard this instead of having three points to get another action to try to outfit our ship, which I think I will do. And for that, oops, forgot to move this back. We'll do plus three for our modifier. We really want to upgrade. We don't want to lose. I have to get a minimum of seven in order to upgrade. So we're at three. Should we make it a done deal? Four, uh, unless we roll double. Watch me do all of this and then we get snake eyes again. Uh, I'll do a plus. Uh, no, you know what? We have to be sure. Let's do plus four. Oh, that feels bad. <laughs> I mean, if you were here for the beginning, I totally mixed up the um, <laughs> the adventure and the search action. So after that, maybe a little bit more smooth. <laughs> this is definitely a hot mess. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I don't want to spend the treasure. I do have plus two after the fact. So let's just hope we don't get snake eyes. So we have three, six, so that is a total of 10, which is a success. We can gain an upgrade. We'll shade in these three salvage for the monstrous design. Perfect. Okay, now we're talking. So we gain one fewer, no fewer notoriety when we sink a ship from a stock action, which is good. Whew, but that, that, that was our entire turn. Two points. All right, let's see. Act three. Oh gosh, we're getting down to it now. <laughs> the Nautilus went at a frightful pace, 40 miles an hour. It literally tore through the water. Where was Captain Nemo? Had he succumbed? Were his companions dead with him? I mean, we did bury that one companion at the very beginning of the game. Kind of a somber note to start off on, but uh, <laughs> we'll see if the rest of the crew makes it through. So this is our second intermission. So at this point, during each game that you play, you can change the motive from, so like, let's say we are not scoring a lot of points as per Explorer, maybe we have a lot of warships sunk, which we clearly don't. Um, we would be able to change it to anti-imperialism, war or science, uh, which are the other three that have their unique scoring conditions, loot conditions and things like that. I think we're gonna stick with Explorer um, since we've kind of gone down that track. We have quite a few wonders that we've accumulated. So we're gonna see if we can keep up with that. And we're going to add our orange reinforcement ships. So these will get a little bit more challenging. And let's see. Yeah, I figured I'm going to have to play through it um, again anyway. So it might be fun to do it as a stream. That way, too, if there are any gurus, maybe they can help impart their wisdom. <laughs> Although, even with all the wisdom in the world, if you keep rolling snake eyes like I have, I don't think it helps. <laughs> All right, and we'll add an additional white die. Ooh, some more ships, but now we can choose the difference between any of the two white dice for our action. So hopefully we'll get some better um, rolls there with that. Okay. All righty, let's see. The Ar uh, Arabian Tunnel. There's a passageway. Yes, an underground passageway that I've named the Arabian Tunnel. It starts below Suez and leads to the Bay of Pelusium. Pelusium? Uh, so we're going to move the Nautilus directly between the Indian Ocean and the European Seas to pass. This is a keep card. And we'll place the Arabian Tunnel there. Um, if we don't pass it and move to... Uh, directly between these two, then we will fail and we won't get the points for it, but there will be no negative um, effect with that. All right, let's see. Yeah, usually um, last year, I suppose it was, I did some streaming on Twitch of solo board games. Um, there's just like a lot of time on task, whereas with YouTube videos, I can split it up a bit more so that uh, makes it better for me a little bit. Also makes it better for the viewer because then you're not scheduled to an exact time that you have to be there in attendance. You can kind of watch at your leisure, but um, yeah, I thought this might be a fun one to stream. I'm not doing anything else with my afternoon. I thought maybe some other people have a free afternoon or evening to join in, so glad you guys are here to watch me fail miserably. <laughs> 
All right, let's roll our all of our dice. Andy, this one's for you. The first four die roll of the game. More dice. Unfortunately, they're not space themed, but. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys. Remember, I was like, it's gonna be great. We're gonna have so many options. Well, I'm sure you're glad you made it for this, you know, for this alone. This is what you came here for. <laughs> oh my gosh. Maybe I should just take a lull turn. If I do that, so like actually not even joking, if I do this, more treasure will go out and we'll only add two ships as opposed to four. I won't get any actions, but I only would have gotten one anyway, so whatever the only thing is we have to check to see if this uprising cube gets removed <laughs> i can't find this speechless <laughs> thanks for dropping in caleb see you next time <laughs> man come on miguel are you entertained is that the line is that the quote <laughs> oh dear <laughs> so we're gonna just take a little turn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, honestly, let's just, I should have just ended the stream there. Oh, bae. Um. All right, we're just gonna take a little turn. <laughs> oh no. And we're full up on two, so they're just gonna have to go right in here. Beautiful. <laughs> This is some uh, A tier entertainment, you guys. You're welcome. <laughs> Free of charge. Just come and enjoy the spectacle. <laughs> Whoo! All right. Um, little turn. Right. Treasure available. Beautiful. If we can get past those four ships, it's going to be great. <laughs> Gotta believe. Flip the table, call it a day. I don't know. One of my favorite shows is Always Sunny, and I always make the joke of, like, uh, there's the episode where they make a board game, and, um, like, the one guy's like, we have to nail down the game board, otherwise I will try to flip the table. I am going to forget that it's nailed down, however, this will happen. So it's like me every time, being like, man, we should just, just gotta hammer it all in. <laughs> All right, so we'll turn that. We're gonna check our uprising cube. So essentially here, we're gonna count the number of cubes and the number of, is it ships or warships? Let me make sure. Um, oh wait, it's right here. So the number of revealed ships, we're gonna roll 1d6. If the result is higher than the number, then it's fine. If it's lower, then we have to remove the cube or gain notoriety. Let's see, a one. Oh my gosh, at least I'm consistent. <laughs> oh dear. I guess we can take one notoriety, that's fine. It's not like we're doing anything with that anyway. Oof. Talk to me about rolling rights. Don't own any, haven't played any. Oh my goodness. Yes, absolutely. So I got a really cheap laminator. It was like 20 bucks. I laminate all my roll and writes, all my score sheets, and I use um, hashtag not sponsored uh, Expo Ultra Fine Markers. They come in a variety of colors. You can get a pack of them online, usually for pretty cheap, but they have really fine points. Um, so as long as you take care of them, they're like writing with a pen. It's awesome. Highly recommend. Um, yeah, Railroad Inc. If you, uh, if you, I, I have a couple friends who don't like roll and writes, um, particularly ones where you draw simply because they feel like they have really messy handwriting. Um, so that's one of the things that, you know, might uh, be a factor, but I personally, I don't know. I could play roll and writes all day, every day. Just kind of something that uh, with some of them, I feel like I can do on autopilot, but still like be engaged. So, um, and they're a little shorter. <laughs> It's a shorter game than this, so if you lose, you can just play again and not have to cry the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Cheating the 20 games collection. I like it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
And Caleb, if you want any suggestions on rolling rights, I'm probably gonna be putting out more videos, but feel free to like hit me up on Instagram or Board Game Geek or I don't know, can you message people on YouTube? Wherever, if you want some recommendations, we'd be more than happy. Yeah, I know, a one, another one. Oh boy. So that is, uh, bu -bu -bu. we get zero action points and we can do actions less, but we're just gonna not, we're just gonna pretend that turn didn't happen. Maybe the six spots. Yeah, because it's lighter. Wait, wouldn't that be the opposite? Because it's like cut out. So if it's lighter, wouldn't it like be more up towards the top? I don't know. These dice are loaded. I mean, I played yesterday and my luck was not great, but it wasn't this bad. <laughs> All right, let's see. Yeah, I've been thinking um, to answer uh, Caleb your message about doing a video idea. I've been thinking about doing an idea about just board game accessories in general. It's one of the things I think that's a big barrier is like people see all these really expensive accessories and be like, oh, I need to like spend a bunch of money. And my thoughts are like accessories are nice. If they enhance your play um, quality or your like enjoyment, then definitely go for it. But there's definitely uh, little tricks and tips to keeping your games looking nice and to getting some nice accessories without, you know, spending all the money that you could be spending on games. So that's one that I have in the bank. <laughs> uh, but uh, good to know that there's interest for that. All right, let's see, a capital encounter. Soon, the Canadian announced that the craft was a big battleship, a double-decker ironclad complete with ram. Dark, dense smoke burst from its two funnels. Its furled sail merged with the lines of its yard arms. The gaff of its fore and aft sail flew to no flag. So we play, we fail to get to notoriety and add uh, the capital ship to the Nautilus's current ocean and fight it immediately. This is a mandatory free stock attack action. I was thinking, you know, I was like, ah, oh, this doesn't sound good. Oh, Cerebrus. Oh boy. Let's see. So they're gonna attack me first. Has an attack of eight. Lead-based paint makes it heavier, I'm sure. They rolled a nine, so let me double check and make sure. It's less than, so I suffer hits equal to the lower die value. If the result is snake eyes, apply 1d6 hits instead. So let's make sure we're doing this right. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I was definitely someone who's like, I'm only gonna sleeve a couple games. And then I took a break from buying board games and ended up buying a bunch of sleeves. <laughs> during my break. I'm like, technically they're not board games, so I think it's fine. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely becoming more common for me to sleeve a lot of my games too. Like my requirements are if I play it a lot, um, then I definitely want to sleeve it. Or if I, it's a travel game that I'm going to be taking out places or over to other people's homes, then I try to sleeve it. Or if it's really pretty, which a lot of my games tend to be really pretty. So <laughs> it's like most games fall into at least one of those three categories. <laughs> Ah, yes, the flavor text. Usually I skip over it when I'm doing it myself, but I figure for like a stream, it's probably more engaging. It's like people like story and stuff, right? They're not weird like me where I just focus so heavily on the mechanics. <laughs> okay, right, so resolving the damage. I believe since it was a three, we have to roll three dice and for each one, we're gonna lose some resources here. But let me just make sure. Combat, plan. How the Nautilus attacks other ships. I mean, believe it or not, I haven't been damaged by a ship yet, which is why we're looking this up to make sure we're doing it correctly. So, yep, we roll them one at a time, one for each. So here's our first hit. It is a one. The one time I don't want to get a one because that's a Nemo resource. Oh my gosh. Here's our second hit. Three, so we lose a crew. And then four, or three. So it's a four and we lose a whole resource. Oh my word. Oh, I forgot to mention earlier as well, if any of these ever gets to the bottom, you can see these red circles defeat, you just lose outright as well. So fun times. <sighs> Good community. Yes, I'm glad we're all bonding over board games and also how terrible I am at die rolls. <laughs> 
that's uh, you know the two things that bring people together. <laughs> Let's attack this ship now. So it's a stock attack. I'm going to make sure I get my plus one. So we're at one out of ten. Let's risk this because why not? So we're at four out of ten. Should I use a treasure? I do have the plus two. It's not going to matter. Probably going to roll snake eyes anyway. So let's see. Hey, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We did it. Woo All right. So we can put this in the... Eastern Pacific or the Western Pacific, or we can use it as salvage. It is only worth two points because warships are minus one. We do get one fewer notoriety thanks to monstrous design. I think we should just take it for the points. I don't think we'll be able to get another upgrade before we lose. I mean, before the end of the game where we're super victorious. So <laughs> let's see. All right, thanks, Caleb. <laughs> Enjoy the time with your family. Uh, let's see. Let's place this Western Pacific or Central Pacific. Probably Western Pacific since we can get to the Eastern Pacific pretty easily here if we want to fill those in. So if we get North Atlantic and European Seas ships, then we'll get an extra eight points. Maybe we should focus on trying to do that instead. Um, that was just our action, so now we have to do our actual turn. All right. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> like, these aren't low die rolls, but I only get one action point where I get another little turn. I feel like we'll just sleep through the entire third act. The The extra white die is supposed to help you get better action um, points, but instead it's just giving us more chances to roll the same dice over and over again and get little turns. My goodness. <laughs> So I guess we're gonna do another wool turn. That way we only take two ships instead. So a four and a four. If we fill up with all ships, we lose immediately. And I'm starting to think that's inevitable. And then we have, um... oh, we did win that, so that's fine. Um, treasure available, sick, this and this, and then we have, we could do, uh, well, I'll get there in a second, check for the uprising, so here we have to roll um, higher than, a, uh, equal to or higher than a three. Oh my goodness, of course it's a two. <laughs> Should we take two notoriety? If we do, we add in the green ships. Otherwise we lose our um, three points. Whatever, let's just go for it. <laughs> At this point, these uh, turns are pretty, or these choices are pretty inconsequential because we're gonna lose either way. Oh no, I feel. Let's see. So that's that. We could gain one action to do a an adventure action for one. I think we're just gonna do that because this is only three points anyway. It's cheaper now, we will get two treasure. Lost time. We had run aground at full tide, an inconvenient state of affairs for floating the Nautilus off. But although it could neither sink nor split open, it was in serious danger of being permanently attached to these reefs. And that would have been the finish of Captain Nemo's submersible. Maybe this is how it ends. Just get stuck in the reef. Reduce the number of Nautilus upgrade cards available for purchase by one of your choice from among those available. Discard it. It is out of play for the rest of the game. Oh, what a shame. It's not like we were gonna get it anyway. Just uh, slide that in on over here. <laughs> yeah, the dice are more, uh, more inclined to make sure that you guys are entertained versus pleasing me. I think that sounds pretty accurate. How considerate of them. Wow, what a great, <laughs> what a great set of dice. Oh my gosh. I didn't even know this was a treasure token. Discard and gain three notoriety. What is this? Come on. Thought I was doing a good thing. Discard and draw two treasure. Okay, that's more like it. That's more like it. 
Let's see. Retain to get a reroll. Cool. And City of Pavloperti. So we got another wonder. Great. That's the end of our little turn. Troubled dreams. I tried to keep my eyes open, but they closed in spite of me. I was in the grip of anguished hallucinations. So it's a test of eight. We can use a Nemo uh, to buff it up. So we have plus two. Let's do it. Eight. Got it. Retain that. Um, so pass. To change any one die result, only regardless of its color, uh, why it was rolled, or how many other dice to a result you choose. Hey, this is the card I needed the whole game. Change one of those ones into a six. Perfect. Okay, rolling for the next round. Okay, this is a little better. So we can get three points, three actions. We get a three, a three, and a six. Oh dear. Let's do three. Let's do a three over here and a six down here. Oh, blue ship. No, thank you. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Um, well, oh, I forgot. We also have to move between the European and Indian uh, seas and Indian ocean if we wanna not die. Or if we want to get um, the Arabian Tunnel card for five points. Otherwise, we just don't get anything. It's kind of far away. We do have an extra movement, but I don't know. Maybe we just need to start getting rid of some ships. So I think what we'll do is we'll use a movement to move up to the Arctic Ocean. We'll try to uh, torpedo this with our steam torpedo upgrade. I doubt I'm going to get a five or a six, but yep. Let's do an action to actually attack. We'll do plus three to our attack. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna reroll. Or if I just use this to change it to a six, we automatically win. Do I wanna do that or do I wanna use a reroll? Oh boy. This doesn't even get us any points, so I'm just gonna use it. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna just do a reroll. Okay, that's better. So we pass. This is dead. I can put it in the North Atlantic. We're one away from getting eight points, guys, but it doesn't matter if we lose anyway. <laughs> oh, happy day. And should we do a search action for some treasure? Why not, right? Although I think we need to get moving and start getting rid of some ships. Um, if we go down in the Central Pacific, there are two there, or we can go to the Western Pacific. There are two ships there. They just give us a um, minus one, which isn't great. Oh, if there are any other warships. So if we attack the warship, we won't get a minus one to our die roll. Yeah, treasure? All right, let's do it. So we're gonna search and we'll use a plus three modifier. I have some things that'll let me re-roll or add more after, so we'll see what happens with those. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So that is a success. Boom. See, Rich, when you make the calls, the game goes well. When I have to make all the decisions, we fail. That's what I'm saying. All right, this one helps us reveal an upgrade or keep for three treasure. Can't purchase an upgrade anyway, so we'll do that. Okay, moving right along. Shortage of air, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> How long, I asked, will the oxygen in the air tanks enable us to breathe on board? The captain looked at me straight in the eye. After tomorrow, he said, the air tanks will be empty. We have a test. Uh, we can use a captain resource. If we pass, we pass. If we fail, we're gonna lose a crew or decide to skip the action phase. Um, do we want to risk losing another captain resource? I don't think so. Losing a crew at this point isn't the worst. So we'll just roll and see how we do. 
See, we wouldn't have gotten it anyways. Six. So yeah, we'll just lose a crew. Because this is worth six points. But yeah, I don't want to risk doing a bunch of other stuff. Or, I mean, I could use my plus two. I'll use my plus two. That way we can get that plus three modifier and maybe uh, four points for that crew if we have it at the end of the game. Fingers crossed, we'll see. So this is a fail because we used it. And yes, this one we passed because we're using our plus two DRM. All right, let's roll these dice. Can't wait to get more clustered numbers. A little better. <laughs> so now the question is, should we take another little turn on purpose or should we take the two actions? I think we need the two actions, but we will be putting out quite a few ships. Like this will be full. This will be almost full. These will fill up. Let's do it. Okay, so we have a three to start with. We'll put it in the Arctic. Ooh, gross. <laughs> We have another three. We'll just keep it right in the North Atlantic. And then we have a five, which we'll put in the European seas. And finally a six, which will go in the Indian Ocean. And we are almost full of ships, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the end card is in the bottom of the deck. It's in the last five cards. So one, two, three, four, five. We would have to do at the minimum of three more rounds after this, which based on the ships, I don't think we'll quite get there. Two actions are go. All right. So <laughs> what were we doing again? Yeah, it is really cool. It's definitely one if you've got like a good chunk of time. Um, obviously streaming it, it's taking a little longer just chit chatting and stuff. But I feel like once you've played through it, um, you could definitely get through it in like hour, hour and a half, depending on your familiarity with it. Potentially even shorter, I don't know if you're quick. Like if you're reading the flavor text or not, how focused you are on the game. If you lose really quickly, you could probably play it in like 15 minutes. <laughs> we'll spend an action to move here. We're gonna do our free torpedo attack on good old Clyde up here. Actually, let's do it on Donau because it has the highest, um, whatchamacallit. Actually, where are the European seas? Should we move there? But then we have minus two, but then we might get eight points. Mm, we'll do that instead. So I'm gonna roll my torpedo attack. We need to get a five. I'm gonna attack the Britannia. See how we do. Oh, who would have guessed? <laughs> oh boy. What I could do is discard this card to just make it a six and an automatic success. I would go up one notoriety. We would get our eight points for European Cs. I'm gonna do that and not think too hard about it. One die rolled for any reason, no matter what. So I'll place this here. Get uh, two minus one for our other upgrade monstrous design. And then we have one more action. I don't necessarily think that I want to try to fight a warship and uh, potentially take damage. So the other thing we can do is take a movement to the Indian Ocean and um, place the Arabian Tunnel. That would get us five points. That seems like a safe route. And this is gonna require us to use one of the special tokens. Let's see. This one here, cool. Alright, so we'll place this one down like so, Boop. and in fact, we'll do an extra movement as well to um, the Western Pacific, so one, two. Wunderbar. Alright. Magnetic Mines. Ooh, this is a funky looking card. In the Nautilus's laboratory, Captain Nemo worked to counter the growing number of armored warships. In your non-torpedo attack versus metal hold warships, those with armor, iron, or battle in their class name, the Nautilus attacks first. Only if that warship survives does it return fire. Hey, this is like a good one if we pass. 
So we can uh, risk a Nemo or a whole resource. Hmm. That's kind of nice. It's like, it's, um, oh, it becomes an available upgrade. If we fail, we discard a treasure of our choice, which I have a treasure that's only worth two. So we'll just roll and see how we do. Nine. We're very close. Is it worth it to discard? I don't have my plus two anymore. I don't have any crew members. So I guess we just fail and discard one treasure. Bleep. And bleep. All right, let's go ahead and roll. One, two, three, three. We'll take the one and the three so we get two actions. Oops, forgot to do that for our movement last time. And let's place out our ships. Is this it? So here's for the one, we put a hidden ship. Then for the three, we put a hidden ship. Ooh. Oh wait, sorry, the two is next, sorry. So for the two, since there's no spot for a hidden ship and since there are no ships spots available in any of those spaces, the next thing we're going to do on the priority is to flip a white non-warship um, to the gray warship side. So maybe let's flip this one. So this becomes the Mana, Mana Knock, Mana Knock, Armored Frigate. Okay. Um, and then the three, we get a hidden ship token and the other three, we have to place one out. So we'll place one here. Agamemnon. Okay. Oh dear. We're winding down here, folks. There's literally only there are literally only two spots left for ships, which means unless we get a little turn or a kill, oh, four. We're hanging on by a thread. <laughs> oh, and this is passed, so we can put that there. Alrighty, what shall we do? Maybe I should just try to attack and get these ships out of the way here. Oh dear. Yeah, let's do that. I'll do a free attack on the uh, Tinwold. Let's see. Close enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, a four. We were close to torpedoing it. It would be nice if that upgrade helped us even like once without modifiers, but that's fine. We'll spend an action to attack it outright. We have minus one because there is another warship there. So maybe we should attack the warship first. We can do a stock attack, which gives us plus one, where we can do a bold attack, which will let us uh, try to continue attacking ships repeatedly. Let's do a stock attack on the, who's a car? Has a seven attack. So we're trying to roll higher than a seven. All right. Oh, a 10, baby. All right, unfortunately that didn't kill it. It just stopped. Uh, didn't kill us first. So we're gonna do plus one, plus three, so four. We need to roll six or higher. Should I discard a treasure? At this point, it's like, it is what it is. I don't have any, I do have a re-roll. Okay. Nine, 10, we did it, yay! And this goes into the Western Pacific. We have a lot of ships here, but we might as well take the single point. Um, we gain one fewer notoriety for making a ship. Easy roll. That's what has been all game, baby. <laughs> a 10 is better than one. That is correct. That's good math. <laughs> all right, let's do another stock attack on the tin mold. We're going to do the same thing. Three, four. We need to get to nine. Oh my goodness, where were these rules earlier in the game? Yeah, that is, because that's 10. This one also goes up here. We gain two notoriety. Oh, if we get four more, we die. If we get these more ships, we die. If we don't make it through the deck, we die. Are there other ways we can die? <laughs> oh dear. All right. That's it for that round. Required repairs. The Nautilus seemed 
becalmed only a few yards beneath the surface of the waves. I suppose that the crew was occupied with interior repairs rendered necessary by the violence of the mechanical movements of the machine. We keep. At the end of the game, we pass and score this card's negative victory points if it is not removed. In order to remove, we must perform a successful repair action and forego one whole gain from doing so. Oh, man. <laughs> And it's worth negative eight points, but we could do a repair action. It costs two action points though. That sounds terrible. Great. Let's roll and see what we get. Oh my gosh, you guys, we get five action points. Woo, 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 woo. Bam. Okay, let's put out these tokens. So here's for one, two, there's nothing near there, so we have to flip one of them. Let's flip this one for gate. Stir. And then for three, again, oh, there's one here actually. We'll place a the ship there. And for, oh geez, for six, uh, because again, they are connected. The earth is round, friends. <laughs> We're gonna place a hidden token here. We're staving off defeat, just barely, but I think based on our score, we, we're gonna be defeated anyway. So let's see, how do we uh, get rid of this? We need to do a whole action, a repair action. Um, yeah, we can do that. Let's try it. I would like to not lose eight points. So we're gonna um, exert a crew or a Nemo. We'll choose crew because that gives us plus three. And we can also get rid of treasure if we want to. Do we want to? Is it worth it? Mm. Yeah, we can upgrade but lose a treasure if we get seven through eight. So we might as well just do it. I'm gonna spend this three treasure. So we're at three plus three is six. Let's see what we get. Uh, plus eight is more than 12. So we would get two repairs. We're gonna sacrifice one repair to put this in the fail pile so we don't lose eight points. That worked out pretty nicely. And we have three actions left. Where can we punch ships that can't punch back? <laughs> Maybe we can take care of some of the ones in the North Atlantic since those seem pretty okay. And, hmm. Yeah, the problem with doing the bold uh, attacks where you can do consecutive ones is I believe you gain notoriety, which we're about to lose based on that. So let's do a stock attack on this Giuseppe Garibaldi. Frigate. All right. And they're going to attack first for six. Oh, it's equal. What does that mean? Less than in order to hit. So we're fine there. We have to attack um, for one plus three is four. We're trying to get to nine. Let's see how we do. We rolled a nine, so that is dead. We don't gain any notoriety. It will be worth negative one point though because it's a warship worth zero, so that's unfortunate. This will go in the North Atlantic. And let's do another stock attack. So we had spent two, one to move, one to attack, and one more to attack here. We're gonna use a plus three again, and we're trying to get to seven. This will also give us a crew if we're um, lucky. Hey, that works. So we get plus one crew, and this will also go in the North Atlantic. Excellent. Okay. Hanging on for another round here. <laughs> Quick, somebody knock on wood. A hollow explosion, that doesn't sound good. This is the rising action. What sort of craft is it, Ned? From its rigging and its low mass, the Canadian replied. I bet it's a warship. Here's hoping it pulls up and sinks this damn Nautilus. Play, 
fail and add the red reinforcement ship group to the ship draw pool, but before doing so, discard one random ship for each of the first three notoriety defeat levels you've not yet achieved. So one, two, three, we haven't achieved. So those get discarded. And add one random undiscarded red ship to the Nautilus current ocean and fight it immediately. Oh my gosh. Lordy. Oh no. Well, let's see how we do. Um, so you may have noticed as well that all the ships have upgraded sides. So at least we haven't triggered that. Um, at the time that all of those would flip is also defeat condition for this one. So luckily that's not a thing, but yeah, they all flip like the yellows or the whites become gray warships and then all the other warships become these like really tough purple ships. There was a lot of points, but yeah, no thank you. Um, so it's going to attack for 10. Oh, I can feel the devastation. And it will only do one damage, so that's good. It's a Nemo damage, that's bad. And... Whoa, as Nemo, I just noticed this, but as Nemo becomes less stable, um, he gives you better modifiers. Totally miss playing this game. Yeah, this is my second play and <laughs> we've got some great die rolls so far, but we're hanging on. It's it's gonna be an exciting, probably defeat, but if we can even get to that last uh, card, the finale, I think it'll be fun. <laughs> yes, madness is good. <laughs> All right, let's see. So now we're gonna try to attack. It's literally called invincible. Man, what a more fitting time to roll snake eyes, am I right? Did it say what type of attack? Free stock attack. So we do get plus one. We might as well try to punch it. We have to get 13. Oh, Lord. Four. I could get rid of this five treasure to try to kill it. It would give me six if I defeat it. But then we also move up to notoriety. Five plus four four is nine then we would only have to roll four Ooh, risk it every time has that well like has that worked out does it work oh yeah okay we'll spend this five i guess we're about to find out not if you roll snake eyes right which that's never happened so we have five six seven eight nine we need to get to 13 Hey, that works. Seven plus nine is some number larger than 13. We go up two notoriety, we're two away from defeat, but we do get to place this into the North Atlantic. Clearly did not like manage the seas equally here, but that's part of the challenge, right? And it will be worth six points. So that's that. And we get to take our turn now. 70% of the time it works every time. Hey, we got snake eyes again. We can take another Volter. <laughs> and then we would um, only be putting out ships in this Western Pacific, but. I guess the three and four would put out two hidden um, tokens instead and we could get two actions. So let's do that. I'm gonna put one in the Western Pacific for the one. And then should we do this Western or South? I guess Western. So it's not a war. Oh, let's put it in the South Pacific, Western Pacific. That way, if we get Eastern Pacific later, we have a free spot for it instead of upgrading a ship. I think that's the better thing to do. Maybe upgrading the ship is better because then um, there will be less ships on the board, though they'll be harder to remove. Uh, yeah, let's do that instead. And then we have a three. So we have a hidden token and a four, which is connected. So we'll place a hidden ship token here as well. Okay. Let's see. If you have any words of wisdom to impart upon us, Jeremy, please feel free. 70% of the time sounds pretty good. I feel like with my odds and how I've been rolling, 70% is at least gonna be good at half though. Uh, let's see what we can do here. So we have two actions. We could 
Oh, did I even try to use my steam torpedo last turn? Should we just keep trying to punch these passenger ships, non-warships here? Should we try to go somewhere else? I think... Let's just stay here and try to kill ships. Uh, let's see. How about... We use our free torpedo. Hey, it actually worked for once! What's up? This one's an eight, so we'll kill that one. North Atlantic. And then we are going to do Ponchy Ponch. Stock attack here. Need to roll seven, so let's risk our crew. Three, four. Killed it, nailed it. And let's see. That was one action since our torpedo was for free. We have one more action. Should we move somewhere? We can save it for the next round, I think, That's what we'll do. Okay, and I think we're getting down, these are the last five cards, so we could conceivably draw the finale card at any time now. Oh, nope, attack with the giant squid. Just as we were crowding each other to reach the platform, two more arms lashed in the air, swooped on the seaman station in front of Captain Nemo and carried the fellow away with irresistible violence. Ooh, irresistible violence. So our test is 10. We can use a captain or a whole resource, uh, or exert a captain or a whole resource. If we pass, we gain two treasure. If we fail, we lose two crew or two hull or one each. I mean, we have to go for it. So we'll risk um, Nemo's sanity here. We're steady, but we may become erratic. So we have three. And let's see. This is gonna be, this is gonna be risky. Um, let me check one thing really quickly. Oh, and it is worth a um, wonder. I guess a giant squid is a wonder, so we would get seven points for that. Oh, snap. So it'd be pretty good to pass, because then we get two treasure as well. for this one test value okay test activities etc etc oh man this is one that I really don't want to lose not that it matters because I don't think we broke 185 if we can even hang on that long anyway <laughs> Oh, thank you for the reminder. Hey guys, did you know that if a test uh, diet gets a natural roll result of two, aka snake eyes, you fail automatically regardless of modifications? Wow, no way. Okay. Yeah, we can spend treasure. I guess I probably should spend my four treasure. Oh my gosh, almost all my treasure's gone. So we're at four, five, six, seven. We just need to roll three. Like literally, as long as we don't roll snake eyes, we'll be fine. Or, oh, I have the one that lets me re-roll. Maybe I'll do that instead. That way we can see what we get. <laughs> Not good, I know, right? <laughs> okay, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We did it! Woo, woo, woo! Giant squid, you are mine. So we get seven points for that and we get two treasure. Hopefully it's not one that makes us take notoriety, otherwise we lose outright. I didn't even know that was a treasure. How's that a treasure? Okay, we got a zero gem. Perfect, nailed it. <laughs> it is worth plus one for um, Explore though. So there's that. And discard and draw two treasure tokens. Oh, that makes me more nervous. Cause what if we get something bad? Let's see. A three, nice, and hmm. ooh, deep sea vents. It's uh, another wonder. So that that worked out pretty well. Let's roll our dice here. 
Oh my goodness. Guys, we did it again. Check this out. Should we just cut our losses? And take a lull turn? Just upgrade some ships? We're gonna do it. Man. So, because uh, we can't place any hiddens, because we can't place any ships adjacent, we're just gonna flip two of the white ships over. Oh, baby. And then we can place an available treasure, if so, and one on the adventure deck. And then we can check our uprising cubes. There's one here, there are no other ships, so we would have to roll higher than a one to have to remove it, so we're good there. Bye, Rich, thanks for hanging out. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be done here soon. So send your send your thoughts and prayers because we're going to need them. Have a great night. OK, so yeah, upgrading just for the sake of it. We'll roll. Ah, it's a, of course, I get a six when I can't possibly fail. Great. Awesome. Just had to stick it to me right at the end. And we have zero action points. Um, We can, however, perform uh, an action for a lowered cost. But I'm pretty wary of that. We could adventure and try to get more treasure. I think we will. Yeah, or, uh, yeah, adventuring for, oh no, we can't. Yes, we can adventure for one point during a lull turn. So let's do that. So we'll get the one treasure and let's see what we get. Do no harm. Oh no. They attacked me and I had to defend myself. All the same time, I was content simply to put the frigate in a condition where it could do me no harm. It won't have any difficulty getting repairs at the nearest port. So we're going to test uh, for 10 using Nemo. Oh, this was a bad idea. Oh my god. We're gonna reroll. Oh no. Oh no. Six. I don't have any modifiers, so we failed. We lose our Nemo. Do we still get the treasure? Let me double check that. Adventure. Um, I believe we still do, but I will check and see. I think that's just like a thing that happens while you're adventuring. Um, perform that's our cards activity and gain one treasure token or gain the tokens after so yes we do get a treasure hopefully it'll make up for the four that we had to discard and the five points we lost from Nemo it's two oh terrible <laughs> all right and moving on then to our next turn Novel proposal. The first thing I noticed was a range of mountains about 2,000 feet high, the shapes of which were most capricious. I knew that we were nearing the island of Ceylon, the pearl which hangs from the lobe of the Indian Peninsula. That's a really great game, by the way. If you haven't played, I believe it's pronounced, is it pronounced Ceylon? Um, it's about uh, tea, which I didn't know the history of uh, tea in that part of the world, so that's very cool. Until I played the game, of course. It's another tidbit of board game knowledge. History and science, I feel like. Those are the two that you get to learn a lot about. So we can risk a hole for a test of nine. This one gets us an extra upgrade. If we fail, we fail. We don't get any points lost or anything, so we might as well just roll. So that's a fail. And let's roll our dice here. One, three, five. Hey, we can get four action points. That's more like it. So we place one out for our one. Hidden ship becomes revealed for the threes. We get two more hidden ship tokens. And then for the five, we replace one of them because it's adjacent. Ooh, with a red ship. No, thank you. Oh dear. All right. Um, let's see. <laughs> I honestly can't believe we've lasted this long, especially after how terrible the first couple of turns were. Um, this is, uh, <laughs> it's nothing short of a miracle. <laughs> we'll see if we can make it to the end. If we can at least get to the part where we get to score and we don't lose per any of the automatic defeat conditions, I think I will be happy with that, but that is definitely not guaranteed at this point in the game. 
the four actions. Oh my word. Should we just try to punch some baby ships? I think so. So I'm gonna use one to move here. We're going to perform a stock action on this ship. Six. Okay, so we're safe there and we need to get a 10 or higher. One, four. Okay, let's see. Oh my gosh, we're one short. Oh no. <sighs> Let's double check and make sure. Oh dear. So we miss, we get one notoriety. Oof. And then we lose one or two risk to ship resources. See rule 12. What is rule 12? Um let me just double check that we're doing that correctly. Oh man, this is not a good way to finish off. I should have just attacked the other ship, even if I got a minus one. It would have been fine. So 12 for combat. Where's the miss? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. At least we did roll double uh, snake eyes. That would have been a disaster as per the rules. Oh, lose an additional type of the uh, type you exerted. The survivors live to tell tales. Great. So we lose the one we exerted and one more. This time, let's try to attack the other one. We get minus one to our die roll. We're going to do plus two. So we need to get five or higher. Of course. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Should we do it again? Oh, this is terrible. I forgot to roll a free torpedo action. Let's do that. Nope. Do we just pass and lose our extra action? We're gonna try one more time. I will risk one, two. Oh no. Oh no, we're one off again. <laughs> All right, let's just flip. Buy all electricity. Is it gonna be like the last card? Professor, said Captain Nemo, my electricity is not everybody's. I owe it all to the ocean. It protrudes, produces electricity. And electricity gives heat, light, motion, and in a word, life to the Nautilus. So we pass at any time during our action phase to immediately receive an additional 1d3 of actions this turn. Yes, let's do it, please. Um, we'll do that a little later after we've used some actions for sure. Hey, we max out our actions and we put out ships. The first one will go in one and then we have another one in four. Let's see, where's four? So that'll go up here. Five will also feed into here. And then six will feed into the Western Pacific where we are currently. Oh dear. If you're still here, man, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> this is a, this has been a journey. Well, we do have five actions. I'm really excited to lose more resources. Maybe we should try to do some repairs on our ship that seems like it might be good or to get more crew the only problem with that is that we might um gain notoriety in which case we would lose outright automatically so our safest bet but we're almost entirely full of ships we only have one more so we definitely need to kill some ships <sighs> let's do our torpedo action for ellen stepford Oh no, because that has two notoriety, so we have to do it on Hannah Moore. Nope. Let's attack Hannah Moore. For one, two, three, four. Why not? Hey, okay, where was that roll earlier? <laughs> 
So uh, this goes into the Western Pacific up here. We don't gain any notoriety. Let's do another attack. We have to, right? So let's uh, attack this Tepehi. Let's do the same thing. Four, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So that is killed. We don't get notoriety because of our monstrous design. And that was two actions. Let's, we have to do it again. I don't think I want to attack those though because they're very challenging to kill. Oh, I forgot we have a minus one, but we exceeded that anyway for both of those. So, I don't know. That's probably our best bet though. This one's a nine, but it's plus, uh, oh, but we get a Nemo. Let's go for it. All right, we're gonna do a stealth attack or a stock attack here. We're gonna risk three. So we have one, two, three, four, but we have to get a oh, minus two. So we're at two. We have to get to nine. There is no way that's happening. And if we lose, we just lose outright. But I guess we have to go big or go home, right? Oh no, okay, here it is. Can we roll seven or higher on two dice, please? Oh, okay, okay. In the ocean, what's up, whaler? We get not only get to keep our Nemo, but he's feeling steady. Oh, I really don't want to push my luck. I can get an extra three. Um, we could try to get more treasure by searching here. We could also try to place an uprising cube, but that doesn't get us that many points. It's only three. Uh, maybe we'll save it and see what comes up next. All right, let's see. A return to Mystery Island finale. Captain Nemo looked at the engineer as if he would have annihilated them. Him. Then falling back upon the cushions, he murmured, After all, what does it matter? I am dying. That's how I felt this whole game, bro. <laughs> Play. When the Nautilus is in the Western Pacific Ocean, the game ends. We're in the Indian Ocean. Where's Western Pacific? Boom. Here. Uh, you would pass this and the game ends. You can no longer select the move action. What? At the beginning of each turn, skip the event phase. Okay. At the end of each turn, move the Nautilus two oceans closer to the Western Pacific automatically for free. Oh, so we're gonna move there and win. Well, depends on what we roll. I mean, I, I, I don't think it matters at this point. So we roll for our turn. Wow, those are some dice. Should we take a little turn? I think we should. Yep, I think we should. So we uh, first start by placing just for the two white dice we've selected. Since six is connected to one, oh, it'll go in six first and then one. Um, I don't really think we could get that many more uh, things. I Oh, we could do our keep action to do some cheapo depo actions. And then we add a treasure out. We check the uprising cube. So this one we would have to roll. Uh, our target is four, five or six. Okay, so that stays since it's greater than or equal to the total number of cubes and the number of warships. And we might as well pass this to gain one D3. This is a weird little rule that I had to look up on Board Game Arena or Board Game Geek. So we're gonna roll this and divide it by two. Now we get a six, of course. So we have four actions. Is it worth it to try to repair our ship or rest our crew? What are the things that are good? Should we try to adventure? I just don't know. Maybe we'll do a search action here. We will risk, I can get a Nemo back if I need to. So we'll get plus three. And let's get rid of this two treasure. So we're at five. 
plus six is 11. Oh, we're one off from collecting two treasures. That's fine. Hopefully it'll be better than the two that we discarded. Three, slightly better. And then should we adventure for one action? Oh, technically we can't search on the action phase. So XCOM all that or on the wool turn, sorry. But we can adventure for one, so we'll do that instead. Shakedown maneuvers. Round the Nautilus the sea dash furiously. This is a bad sea, remarked Ned Land. Detestable indeed, and that one does not suit a boat like the Nautilus. Test 10. We'll risk, uh, exert a captain. If we pass, we receive up to two ship resources or two actions or take one of each. Ooh, okay. So we have three. Definitely want to pass. We'll do the three treasure that I had from before. So we're at six, so we need to roll a four or higher to pass. Is that worth it? Yes. Okay. Oh, oh, whew. okay. We're good. <laughs> so we pass, which will give us four points, and we get two ship resources. Oh, so we can get Nemo's back? Boom, boom. Nice. Nemo's feeling strong. Okay. So now do we want to risk doing anything else on our turn? We could try to rest. We could try to repair. Um, those don't get us points, however, unless we're in these columns, which I think it's riskier. Uh, so we would lose... Yeah, we're closer to losing points there, so I think we're just going to leave it. We reset down to one action point, which is the maximum that we can save. We will immediately move one, uh, two spaces towards the Western Pacific, which again, they're connected. <laughs> and that is the end of the game, so we'll pass. The last thing is our Nem Captain Nemo's Diaries card from earlier in the playthrough. So after pass, uh, placing the finale card in the pass or fail pile, we're gonna test. We can't use any of our exertions. I'm also gonna discard this for Nemo. Gets us seven points as opposed to five. Oh, I guess it's six as opposed to five. One more point. So, oh, we passed the finale. So we passed this automatically and we gain one Nemo. So I guess we're not <laughs> getting rid of that. Uh, because we gain one from this. Oh, if the finale's passed, it gives us a lower barrier, so we only need to get eight. Oh gosh, and this is just die roll. We can't modify it. Wow, what a what a spectacular finish. Like I said, consistent. We gain our Nemo. Okay, so now moving on to scoring. Um, I'm gonna get a calculator out because I will likely mess it up if we don't do that. Alrighty, so for, um, again, the scoring is gonna be different based on the different scenario that you choose. So we're doing explore. Our warships are minus one each. Um, so the red ship value. So we have a total of two with the subtracted one, one, negative one. So we're at two and then six. So that's six points for our warships. And then we have Non-warship sunk are gonna be worth their face value. So we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. All right, then we have our adventure cards. So anything with this icon, we have one for our monstrous design upgrade. And then we're gonna check our um, pass here. So we have one, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Remember we need a score of higher than 185 to pass. Right now we're at 39, but these are the lowest scoring ones in Explore. Next we get plus one for each of our gem plus the face value. So here we have, um, I'm gonna add the plus one. So three uh, plus five is eight, plus five is 13 plus one for our zero, so 14. Do we have any other treasures? I don't think so. So 14 points. 
Oh, this is not looking good. Oh no! Uh-oh, can I find the history? I accidentally cleared it. No. I guess I could just listen back in the stream. Do I say it? Oh, that's the problem with low latency, right? Okay, so we were at 39? Is that right? I hope that's right. <laughs> Hold on, can I go back? So let's see. What did we say for treasure? We're at 10, 13, 14. And then the next thing we're going to take a look at is liberation, which are cubes um, and any other symbols that show that. So we just have three there. Oh no, I was about to say the score. Okay. And then we have four points for each of our science or science are worth times four each. So we have four, Eight plus four plus sixteen plus another eight. Oh, I think I missed it. <laughs> Sorry. So we have one, two, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times four, which is 32, if math is a thing that I can do. So we have 56 plus 32. And then we have times seven for any wonders. So we have one wonder here, two, three, four, five. We have a bunch of wonders here, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12 wonders times seven points each, which is 70, 86. Oh no. All right, and let's see. If we have any characters remaining, we'd get that. We have ship resource penalties. We don't have any, we get eight points. Oh, we got 182, is that right? Oh dear. So we, if we had gotten 186, so we were four points off from um, being a failure. <laughs> That's terrible. Like if you don't get defeat, then you're just a failure. Oh no, sad day. So there you have it. That is a playthrough of Nemo's War. Again, this is my second playthrough. So uh, apologies for the mix up with the search and adventure actions at the beginning of the video got it sorted out pretty quickly though once we got into it. Um, if you're watching this in the future, feel free to let me know down in the comments below if you have any thoughts on the games. If there's anything you noticed that was incorrect in the playthrough, please let me know. Um, this is definitely one I want to get to the table more often or more now that I've played it twice. Um, and it's, yeah, definitely very exciting and enjoyable. There were some interesting die rolls there. I'm probably gonna play it a couple more times before I do a full review. So you can check that out on Instagram. I put the link in the description down there. Um, we also have more fun board game photos and just random thoughts and things like that. So yeah. That is Nemo's War. Fun times. Thanks again for joining if you were here live for the stream or if you're watching at some unspecified point in the future. Be sure to subscribe. You can like uh, to help get this video out to more people. And I think I'll just end with the idea that like this is one I really wanted to get into for a long time. It just looked so heavy and it looked like there were so many tedious things that you had to do and it looked very hard to learn. Um, there were a lot of, I guess, entry barriers in that regard, in my mind, to it. But I'm super, super glad. Again, thank you to Tabletop Tycoon and Victory Point Games for sending me this copy. Um, now that I had it, I had no excuse not to learn and play it. And again, surprisingly, once you go through one game, I feel like it was definitely a lot uh, more straightforward than one would think, especially if you're using your references to kind of keep you on track. So. 
Thanks again for joining me. That's all the time we have for today and I will see you next time. Bye.